After racing through the decades, it's time to reset the time machine to the here and now. The Series 2 playoffs live from Mexico City are just a few short weeks away. Welcome to the 2018 Forza Racing Championship Series 2 recap show live from Seattle, Washington. I'm Kate Osborne. Team F4H is holding it down in studio today as they get ready to battle the top teams of Series 2 with some of the most unique challenges yet. It's all about guts and glory as they look to show the world what they can do for the Series 2 playoffs in Mexico City. We'll be talking all about that and more here today, so break out the popcorn. It's a Series 2 recap show. It is good to be back with you on another Wednesday, doing things a little bit differently here today with the Series 2 recap show. Of course, Allie Tack, Scott Cole, right beside me as well. My goodness, it's nice to see your friendly faces on a Wednesday. Yeah, it feels like we've just been out here, but now we're coming back and get to enjoy a little team racing today. Yeah, what a fun event we've got coming up. I can't wait to see all the drivers out on track. We've been talking about exhibition style, and this is really important to note that we mean business as it relates to <laughs> exhibition style, right guys? I don't think it matters if they're <laughs> if they're practicing or qualifying or racing for real or an exhibition. Anytime you pick up that controller and get on the track, it's real business. It's always a different play style as well with teams. That's what I really like about it. It's, it's no longer just about what driver is fastest out there on track, but also which drivers can, you know, shuffle around best together. Yeah, and speaking of which, what do we really have in store here today? Well, let's break it down for you. That team race overview. Yeah, we got four teams, three races, three vehicles per race. And uh, I tell you what, it's a chance to pick it's up some all points. That's loads of loads yeah, of racing. Right. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, and of course, then we do the picks and bands. And this is really interesting because it shows the strengths and weaknesses of these teams, and yet at the same time can really make a big difference for those other guys. Yeah, this hits the esports nerd in me. You know, <laughs> my, my, my Dota days, my League of Legends days, have the opportunity to pick some cards, but also ban some cars and, and maybe make it tough on some of the teams. Yeah, and we're throwing six cars at these guys, and they get to choose which ones they want to keep in the racing, but also which ones they want to forsake, throw away and not drive, <laughs> not get anywhere near. Talk about some strategy and some with some quick strategy with that. And of course, we have those oddball vehicles next. There's a brat in there. There's a trophy truck. I want to see these guys race a brat. That was probably the most interesting <laughs> race we had in Series 1 recap show that we did when we had the teams out here was you have big old trucks, you got fast cars. It's going to be interesting to see how the teams use the strengths and weaknesses there in the oddball race. I, I always love seeing trucks racing. There's no there's no actual, <laughs> there's not the Mercedes tank pool this time. We had that last time out in the team recap. This time around, we've got some big cars, some little cars, and a good, var good variety for the oddball race. And then, of course, race number three, we have the Sport GT icons, which really makes it interesting around here. Yeah, for the first time, we're actually going to see a little bit of tuning out there. And isn't that great? I mean, it's, it's a real skill in Forza Motorsport, uh, tuning the cars, you know, setting up the springs and the mm -hmm. dampers, all that stuff to make them faster around the track, make the drivers feel better while they're driving them. It's great to see him <laughs> managing to use that here in the Forza Racing Championship. Well, and of course, we want you to get involved in the show here today, as always. So just join us at watch.forzarc.com to, oh, to, I guess, share your opinion of what these guys should be racing in the oddball race, race number two. I tell you what. McLaren would never make an SUV, right? But Maserati, they're okay. They'll throw it out there. Yeah, they'll sell out. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, there's, I mean, I know that's not the Evo that you love, but at least we at least we got an Evo yeah, out there. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a right answer for me in this poll, and it is the Evo. <laughs> 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 um, that Maserati, for me, is not is not a racing car. And of course, if you're watching at watch.sportsrc.com, you can complete those quests and win some prizes, which I know all of us look forward to seeing what those rewards Ooh. are each and I want all the awards. Give, <laughs> all give the me things. all Scott the Cole rewards. <laughs> I, I need all of them now. Of course, the liveries there. Look at those bad boys. I love that Ford. I love the Focus looks great. This whole series number two, the liveries have been such a Is showing. that a My Little Pony on the side of that truck? 
I hope it is. I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> of course, go. you got to look good to race good. Hey, I'm a, I'm a World War II guy, so any sort of paratrooper kind of thing, I'm down with. Yeah, jetting <laughs> in from 50,000 feet sure. and just landing in your Zonda. Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. I think you would look pretty good in that thing, Scott, just if I had to uh, take a guess. <laughs> All right, of course, as we've been talking about, it's team racing, it's exhibition style. So let's go ahead and break down the teams that we're going to see here today. Yeah, you, we talked about you know four teams out there that are going to be uh, racing with us. And how about TX3? Want to give a big shout out to Lightning and Topher. They're in the actually in the wake of Hurricane Florence that's coming their way. So thinking about them, uh, but it's it's so nice to actually have one of our teams in the building over here, Kate. We absolutely do. We want to say hello and a big old welcome to F4H as they are representing a few different spots all over the U.S. We have Sterilizer, we have Diablo, and we have Revs. Revs, welcome back to Seattle. Your second time hanging out here, this time really getting yeah. ready for Mexico City. How do you feel? Good. A uh, little pre-race jitters, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> you feel the team's confident with what's going on here today? Definitely. All right, moving on over to Diablo. As you know, Revs is uh, right now seated 25th in the global leaderboards as he's heading to Mexico City in just a few weeks. Diablo here. Glad to have you because I think there was one point in time you did not know that you would be going to Mexico City. Uh, absolutely not. I started <laughs> after week one. I was ranked 51st overall. Um, I had to gain 15 spots in three weeks. The field um, is extremely difficult to you know make any ground in. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to be here and I'm really happy to be going to Mexico City. We're super stoked to have you. Hey, by the way, he's also the president of F4H. We were talking about this earlier today. And I got to say, that seems like a big undertaking. We'll get to that later. And then we have Sterilizer. Look at that smile. He, I know he's excited to be in Seattle, representing F4H as he's heading to Mexico City. Newcomer, though, to the team. How welcoming has the team been? Oh, it, it's been great. I love F4H. I love all the people on it. Um, the support has been unreal. And now, just a month after joining the team, I'm here at my first ever event that I've traveled to, finally. So I'm really excited. I can just say that the camaraderie around this place with these three guys getting ready for what is to come today is pretty high. I hope those other guys who are racing today are ready for it. Well, absolutely. And, of course, you're, you're probably wondering where the heck Mechberg is. Actually, a, a little game you might have <laughs> heard of called Forza Horizon 4. The demo dropped today. So while you're hanging out with us, make sure you go check that out. We'll be talking a little bit about that later on. But, hey, you, you, you know, we also – we forgot to mention we have JSR. We got – yeah, TPR as well. TPR yep. hanging out with us as well. Lots so of teams out there. Four teams, a lot of talent out there, and, and we're really in for some, some great racing today. Let's take a look at the roster first for TX3. Yeah, I love diving into these rosters, especially because the teams really put them together, not just based on who the fastest drivers are, but also who's going to work best together. We've got Papai, Paps, and Mr. Jack here for TX3. They're all three come from sort of the original TX3 roster. It used to be a French team. It's international these days, but... These all three come from way back in the day when TX3 was just a little team out of rural France. The question will be which Mr. Jack will we see today? Of course, you already met the guys from uh, Fighting for Her, F4H, Sterilars, Diablo, and Revs, a.k.a. Paul, hanging out with us. And, of course, TPR, Chemical, Davy Spills. Did I just say Davy Spills? Davy, Davy Spills. Spills. <laughs> and like, Zermatt as they take a drink of my water. I mean, if he slips off the track, we might start calling him Davy <laughs> Spills, maybe. Uh, JSR as well. We've got Taipa, Rossi, and South. I love that roster. I love this team. Uh, a very popular team in the community as well. So I'm super excited to see what they can do. Taipa, oh, welcome to the Forza RC. Way too long waiting for that. Yeah, I know we got, uh, of course, F4H in the building, but JSR, that's going to be a pretty tough team to beat today. That's a, that's a, that's a strong roster right there, Alan. Yeah, it is. It's going to be super exciting seeing these four teams interact together on track. Cannot wait. Well, I promised you some picks and bands, so let's get right to it as I'm nerding out a little bit. And uh, so those are the cars you have to choose from here. And one of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the drivers, will be, well, the teams will be looking at this and choosing which ones they want to keep in the race, which ones they want to throw away, they don't want to get in. Um, my favorite out of that, I think, is the M1 Pro car. What do you reckon, Scott? What's your, what, what, what do you pick? Uh, I, all I can tell you is the ones that won't be picked are the two that are on the left side. I have, <laughs> I have a feeling. When I said one of these things is not like the other, those are the two oddballs over there on the left-hand side. You reckon? I mean, the, the, the 
the Nissan is an awesome car, right? It's enormous, yep. uh, but it's one of those homologation specials. The ones, you know, they, they make them for, they basically make a racing car, pop it on the road, and then pretend that it's a road car so they can race it uh, in, in GT Series. Absolutely incredible machine. And you were telling me at breakfast that BMW's trash. <laughs> I don't love the road cars. I don't love the. I'd go for it. Yeah. Anyway, this, this this is a whole different story. But um, yeah. I mean, I love the I love the pro car. All right. So let's get to the selection here for picks and bands, and it's going to be TX3, who's going to start us off. And let's see. Oh my goodness. All right. There you go. There it goes. That's there the uh, go. that's the NASCAR disappeared. That's Joe, a shame. Joe Gibbs, we barely knew thee. <laughs> yeah, love him and leave him. That's a shame. Uh, I, I enjoy seeing a NASCAR going around the track. Same time, how would that sort of compete against the other cars? Maybe it's a bit of an oddball in that mix. I, I, I think it was. I think it's out of place to say the least. The cool thing is we have F4H actually in the building, so we're able to get their pick live. Let's go over to Kate. Oh, Diablo's reaction when he found out that that was banned right then and there. Not not cool with you, huh? Uh, not so much not cool with me, but not cool with Revs. We were planning <laughs> on throwing a little bit of strategy into this race, and Revs is going to drive the Toyota uh, NASCAR. So now we've kind of had to readjust. And uh, for that reason, we're going to ban the Nissan R390. Oh. So a little bit what Allie and Scott talked about. It's kind of an oddball car, homologation special. Um, it doesn't drive like the rest, so we're just going to have to see. Now that we're not driving the NASA, we're just going to have to improvise from here on out. You feel like this the cars that are left, so your team can really pull through? It feels like each of them have the strength to you in some way, shape, or form? Uh, I I think so. I think that... Come on, confidence with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't really think it matters which car we're going to drive. I think we're all fairly confident in all of them. You know, we're practiced and ready to go. Um, I just, I think the NASCAR was going to suit us a little more. We're all Americans, so yes. we, we like that horsepower, <laughs> rear-wheel drive. Driving on an oddball kind of track um, with that car combination, so... It took uh, one of her feathers out of her cap. That's all. That's what this is all about, right? This is the challenges that we're presenting these teams here today makes it fun, right, Jens? Yeah, USA, USA, USA band. Yeah, they're going to have to find a replacement <laughs> for displacement. <laughs> That's right. I like it. No, thank you. <laughs> Let's see what uh, TPR, their selection for left. Oh, there it's it X-Speed Racing is out. Yeah, so the Capri Turbo. Um, another car that maybe, I mean, it's, it's an incredible launch, basically, that car. It has a huge amount of acceleration, which makes it a little bit less of a sort of standard car. The three cars left are a little bit more sort of um, strong all over, maybe. And the uh, crazy so, yeah. thing is, no picks, all bands. True. All yeah. bands. All bands. A very it, negative looking team here. It's, <laughs> it, it's more about what you don't want to drive compared to what you want to <laughs> drive. So there we go. Race number one. Got the Mercedes, the BMW, and the Ford Focus RS RX. And I think you're right. This is going to be uh, lead to some interesting racing uh, just based on the characteristics of these race cars. Yeah, the Mercedes is definitely going to be the grip car here. I think that the uh, Ford will offer a lot of acceleration and maybe the M6 or the M1, excuse me, with a bit more top speed than those the other three. So three different characters of car uh, for each of the drivers out there in each of the teams. Well, you know the car. Let's talk about the track. The test we're going to put them through, Nurburgring, all, nope, no, it's not the Norschleife, sorry. It's just <laughs> it's the, the GP one. <laughs> It's the wee one. Uh, just the uh, small GP track that sticks off the bottom of uh, the Norschleife with that very intimidating course that goes through the uh, forests of Norburg. Um, and yeah, getting underway. Here we go. We are all out on Nurburgring. And we are going, going, going. Sterilizer out in front here on the start. As you see, the Ford focuses start to get fo focuses, focus eye. They're fo fo focusing. They're fo focusing. focusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, all three of the focuses getting away at the start there. And that's very, very impressive. Not least, I mean, they're all the four wheel drive cars. They have amazing launch off the line. Uh, one focus, though, there's four teams out there, of course. So right. Three focuses in the lead. So there's one focus that didn't make it through the pack at the start of this race. All right, lap one of seven. Scott Cole, Alley Tack with it. Of course, we've got F4H in the building. That's Kate Irons and Warby hanging out with them throughout the match. We go wide already early, trying to get back into the traffic. So that'll fall all the way back to eighth position. And there is TX3. Right. Up there at the front running. Second place right now, the TX3 Focus, and that's a bump from the TPR Focus just behind, I think. That was Zermatt just losing it slightly, and now he's going to have... Chemical! No! Anyone but Chemical! <laughs> Sweet Chemical, your favorite. <laughs> your favorite TPR member losing it there at Dunlop, and the run up to Shumiaka now, and uh, the driver's filtering back into line. 
All right, still lap one of seven. We've already seen a bit of chaos as they make their way over to turn 11. A little right, excuse me, yeah, a little right-hander. And you can see there is TX3 Mr. Jack Zermack. It's gonna slide in front. So now, you can see the characteristics of the car. I love different cars on the track. Uh, it's, it's almost addicting to watch. It is, and when you have different cars like this, one is naturally going to be stronger at some parts of the track than another car. So you see a lot more overtaking, a lot more interaction between the cars. We saw Zermatt just pulling away there on the straight, but suffering in the corners in That's that right. board relative to the BMW. Great point. Lap one of seven. Still coming back to the start finish line. We got to do that six more times, and I, I'm okay with that. As we move on to lap number two. JSR Taipa currently running in third, and we're on board with him in that awesome M1 Pro car. This car, he'll be running at stock. No tunes allowed in this first race, so we'll get to tuning later on in the competition. But this car stock, if you guys haven't driven it on Forza Motorsport 7, get right on there and give it a go. It's got this amazing sort of vintage differential on the rear, and it really gives you a, a sharp nose as you come in and out of corners. Really fun to drive. Of course, we're doing some team racing here today, just 17 days away from Series 2 playoffs down in Mexico City. You're going to see a few of those drivers here today competing down there at the end of the playoff run and then of course for the championships one month later we'll be in london rocking and rolling to see who's going to be the 2018 champ leading the race lap two is f4h sterilizer the guy in the studio with us right now uh this is his first event he's not taking part in from his home but he's out at a uh, at a studio so what a great what a great start for sterilizer uh, he, in a live event he was coming in from dallas texas what was he telling us what was, it, what was his name last year? Monaro. He was Monaro, IHR Monaro. Monaro. Yeah. I was calling Marinara. <laughs> I, I, I was all over the place with that name when we were hanging out in London doing a few of those shows uh, during the weekly races. And you see, still on board with JSR Type R, trying to chase down that number two spot. It just you, you talked about the differences in the cars of when you get into the corners, that's his opportunity to overtake and then just flying out as that Ford Focus when he gets a chance to stretch his legs. And you can really see it, can't you? On this, on his back straight at the Norburg ring, that Ford powering down, just plowing away from the BMW. The BMW, is, it's a waiting game. You have to just wait for the corners, move through them, and you can see Zermatt there making the mistake on the chicane, easy to do in the Ford, and Mr. Jack punishing him for seventh. Well, we talked about Chemical currently running in 11th place, and that's because he got caught up in that first lap trying to keep himself on the track as we have an opportunity to, to take a look again at that lap number one for Chemical that put him all the way back in that 11th spot. As you can see him coming through right here, Alec. Yeah, a little bit of a grind there with Davy Skills, his teammate at the Dunlop hairpin. It wasn't, excuse me, that was Mr. Jack then in the other M1 Pro car. So Chemical and Mr. Jack coming together at Dunlop and Chemical losing it on the inside. He's got some making up to do here. Team racing, four teams. Three different cars on the track here in lap three of seven. This is just race number one of the day. This is part of the picks and bands. So these are the three cars that were left after the three bands were passed out. And you can see type R for JSR has fallen back a spot as his teammate JSR Rossi and you just knew eventually the Ford Focus was going to come through, and that's that's the cream that's rising to the top here on Nurburgring. The Ford looks like it has a little bit more pace, but I love seeing the two JSR drivers side by side here on the track in third and fourth. JSR Rossi and JSR Type R might now be able to work together to crack that nut that is the TX3 Ford up in second. It's, there it is. It's about to be a TX3 sandwich right now, or maybe a baguette if you're talking about the, the French TX3 drivers. There, that and massive there's the spin. spin out. That was Papai getting caught up with Taipa. Taipa's getting away with it here on the back. No, he's not, he's slowed down. So Taipa may be feeling like that was his fault, backing off and allowing Papai to get back on track. That's massive position losses for both of those drivers though. Down from second and third to sixth and seventh on track. Yeah, they'll drop four spots respectively. Papai getting caught up, put in the spin cycle. Uh, able to recover there in sixth place. That's the damaged Ford. He's got, he's carrying damage. You can see the car wouldn't turn through Coca-Cola there, the final corner. 
at the Nürburgring GP circuit, uh, just failing to get the nose into the corner, that for me speaks of suspension damage, possibly on the front left. Love to check on that. Lap four of five now, and Type R cruising along here. The first turn, you see Chemical right behind him, who's now riding along in 10th at third. He got caught up earlier in the race, so he's trying to move up a little bit, but yeah, that's a that's a thing of JSR in a perfect position in that 3-4 battle, but then they decide to get greedy and go for that second spot, and now it's cost themselves as a team. It's cost type R, but Rossi's still up there. He's still up there, Scott. And then, you know, it was it was a little bit dirty, <laughs> it was a little bit rough, but Rossi but made here, the position. But here's the deal. You you would have you're, you're trying to secure three and four. Okay, well, congratulations, you're now three and eleven. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a net loss, you're right. And if you add up the points, it's not the perfect thing for the team. Same time, there are advantages here for JSR as they head in towards lap number five of this race. Sterilizer leading the way. And uh, he's doing a great performance here. I'm so impressed by how cool Sterilizer seems. Under what must be a lot of pressure for the guy. This is his first, well, his first studio event. It, it makes it easy when you're out there basically in hot lap mode right now because you, you have so much distance between the number two after all that as he heads into uh, the chicane here in, in lap four. But you got so much room between the guy behind you and JSR Rossi. Diablo running around in third. So right now F4H running one in three in this team event. So a nice job by those that are right here in the studio. F4H one and three, and they're packed together in the top four with JSR, who are running second and fourth. South in that Mercedes. We haven't seen much of the Mercedes no, out we here. Have not. But South managing to drag that car that looks to be underperforming up to fourth position, and he's even threatening well, on the some back of that here of F4H it, for third. Well, some of that was just him coming unscathed, and, and, and some of that contact is. He's got a place, and he's starting to look to the inside now of Diablo, but South can't make it stick. We haven't seen much of the Mercedes and the characteristics it has around Nurburgring, Green, but how about that battle? BMW and Mercedes neck and neck here in lap five of seven. Can Diablo hold the door on South? Love those defensive lines. Diablo's running. He's really sticking his heels into the ground and saying, you're not going to get past me easily, Mr. Mercedes. I'm going to put it on the apex. I'm going to defend my line. And Diablo holding on to third. He's only got to do it for two and a half more laps. German engineering at its finest on their home circuit here at Nürburgring. And you're right, a little bit over two laps to go. As that's, that's the battle right now, as you see Zermatt in fifth. He's got Mr. Jack behind him. So some of those focuses falling back just a bit. Mr. Jack in that pro. Yeah, TPR will be hoping to move forward in later races, I think. Not shining here in race number one. Uh, Zermatt as their lead driver in fifth position. They'll have opportunities later on to impress, though, for now. The driver's impressing it here, fighting it out for third position, and Diablo continues to lead the defense against JSR South. It's all over his rear in that Mercedes. That Ford Focus, 478 horsepower. 528 torque, it's a light one at 28, 2,400 pounds. So that's where you can see it really can open it's it up tap. and he's gone wide. Diablo's gone wide, not sure if he was tapped or not. And we got Zermatt getting caught up on the tires. Chaos there at the end of lap number six. That battle coming to a head between South and Diablo. Maybe a little bit of a touch with South there on the rear of Diablo, maybe not. We'll have to have another look at that later on. And yeah, Zermatt losing out. It's a tough little chicane there at the end of the track. Uh, a little left to right, you can bump over the curbs and you can really get unsteady, lose rotation and find yourself in those tires very, very easily indeed. Yeah, turn 13 and 14 and we got a little bit of lock up here. Almost drifting his way through. Zermatt. And it allows Chemical to move up, so does JSR Typar. And right now we got some, we got a few of these Hoonigans that are having a tough time keeping it between the lines. Yeah, Zermatt looks like he's uh, lost focus a little bit there. That or he's carrying damage. A lot of handbrake being used to right. rotate that car. And it doesn't look very happy at all. All four smart tires blasting smoke. And you've seen a lot of cosmetic damage that is leading to actually mechanical damage. 
But that's what you get when you get three different cars, three type of characteristics. That's where you get this. For us sitting at home and watching this, you get a little bit of entertainment. Here in lap six of seven, JSR South eventually overcoming Diablo going wide. Not sure if it was a tap or not. That's not our job. We'll leave it up to those that are on a higher power. But a little bit over a lap to go here on Nurburg Ring. Yeah, plenty for the marshals to be looking at, at the end of this race. Someone who seems to have run a very, very clean race, though, is F4H Sterilizer. We're looking at him right now, leader of this race since lap number one, and he's just walked away with it. Let everyone else behind make mistakes, kept his own pace, and uh, looking very, very strong here for a first victory. Boy, Davies goes all the way in the back. I haven't seen much out of him. But it would be so easily in this race. Let's check in on this last pass that you guys saw here in lap. I believe that was coming up on the end of five into six. There and you can it. see Diablo really look like, let's take a look at this again. Oh, I it's don't know. It's so hard to tell, it's I, so hard. I mean, you gotta keep in mind that Mercedes has a bonnet that just goes on forever. It's a, it's a very I, lengthy car. I'll, I'll be honest, we just took three looks at that. <laughs> and I saw nothing. All right. No tap at all. But that's just me. Uh, and I admit, we, we, you know, we were talking about that Mercedes, the front engine. You know, a huge, we call it a hood over here. You know, hang out the hood. Bought but, it. but I, you know, I saw nothing. I mean, it's good that we've got Diablo in the, in the studio with us. Maybe we can get some reaction from him sure. after the race, get a little bit of a breakdown of that. For me, there may have been some contact, may have not. It looked like Diablo had already carried a little bit too much speed out of the chicane. Uh, yeah, maybe overcooked just a bit. Yeah, yeah. Just maybe a little, a little bit of a helping hand from South, but South sitting in third at the end of the race, and it's going to be down to a Marshall's decision for him. JSR looking strong here at the start, though, with second and third, whereas F4H have first and fourth. Well, remind folks, let's go back a few months ago. JSR looked awfully strong as a team. Well, we've had these team races before, especially Rossi, who was, was unstoppable at some point. But Sterilizer has really just kind of run away. Uh, while all this was happening behind him, he's been able to, to keep focus. There's a reason the windshield is bigger than the rear view, right? That's, that's just focus. He's kept it down. He's got three more turns. He's got to negotiate the chicane. I can't sing his praises enough. I really can't. Just right. watching him through this last couple of bends. Uh, Sterilizer managing to just control, control his own emotions, control his own uh, sense of calm, and keep that car in a really beautiful line throughout this track. And he is going to provisionally take this one on Nurburg Ring. So Sterilizer dominating really from the get-go. We saw those focuses at the beginning, at least three, uh, you know, of the four teams that sort of rise to the top uh, as we moved along. We saw the Mercedes start to gain ground. We saw the BMW start to lose ground. And it's going to be interesting. Uh, we kind of know where we're at provisionally, but after the stewards and Marshall have an opportunity to look at it, it's going to be... There's going to be some decisions. I know we're, we're sort of in exhibition mode. We're getting ready for the playoffs. We're celebrating what happened, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, if folks are going to yeah. folks are going to complain they, the same. They, let me be honest they, with they you. Still yeah. want, they still want to prove themselves out there on track, and every single opportunity uh, to race is another chance to impress your competitors, to impress your teammates, and maybe work on your own reputation a little bit. People who've done a great job there are the F4H team, notably Sterilizer, who won that race, and also JSR. It seemed like either damage, grip, or both was an issue. So you can thank the community for not making it wet at Nurburg <laughs> Ring. So they actually voted for dry there. Can't imagine what would ensue on a wet track. Yeah, enough chaos there with a, with a dry track, a few puddles in there as well. It might have been cars flying off the track surface uh, all the time. I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see what TPR and uh, TX3 yeah. can do. I mean, you were talking about this time last year during the, during the race. And what a change from this time last year with TX3, who looked like the dominant team in the Forza Racing Championship. Now, struggling to get out there to third and fourth. And you know, is there something about when you have the different vehicles on the track, the different characteristics, and of course, a, a, a nice job by Race Boy and his team picking out uh, the cars that they eventually went with, but um, there's just something about that. I mean, you, you come back to the sort of real life GT or GTLM where Every car, like the Corvette's got a different characteristic sure. than maybe the Audi R8, right? And, yeah. and 
that sort of comes alive track per track, and it just makes it a lot more interesting, especially aesthetically to look at. It, it also makes it a lot more interesting in terms of the tactics because there'll be drivers out there who will prefer cars which have better acceleration, which do better in the corners, faster on the straight. Lots and lots of different ways that cars have characteristics. Having different cars is one way of having that. Opening up tuning, which we'll do later True. on today, is another way of involving those kind of preferences. Yeah, we'll see that in race number three. Let's take a look at the replay. There's some we saw, and there's a lot we didn't see uh, here in race number one. And they started off on the the get-go of Rossi just going a bit wide there. Yeah, overcooking it into turn one, and that was actually Rossi's biggest mistake there, I think. Uh, really, all the Fords getting away at the start of the race really nicely, and Rossi falling back in lap one. Well, when your car is not aluminum and it's wood, anything, <laughs> any, anything can happen there. That's right, cherry blossom uh, <laughs> Ford focus there. There you saw Chemical get out of sorts there. Papai was actually looking pretty good through half of this race, and then Type Ooh. R. Rossi didn't know his teammate was in there. He moved, tried to move across on Papai, and the two of them squeezed each other. So Rossi not leaving enough racing room for the other two, but maybe a little bit of an optimistic move from, G, from uh, uh, JSR South. And this is the one we really took a couple looks at, and I still don't see anything <laughs> there as Diablo. Uh, the good news is, is he's in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, so hopefully we'll have, get an idea of what actually happened uh, between JSR South and F4H. Uh, Diablo. I mean, I'm super curious to hear to hear Diablo's side of this. Remember, there's always two drivers involved in every incident. Takes two to tango, doesn't it? So we don't get to hear South today. Uh, we all know South to be a very clean driver uh, out there. He wouldn't do anything purposefully. And it looked like the shadow of a nudge, if there was a nudge at all. Well, I understand we have the provisional results we can take a look at here through race number one. Sterilizer out in front. Really a, a tremendous race out of him. Rossi, South. Diablo, but something tells me these provisional results aren't going to stick. Who knows? Who knows? You know, the, the marshals have a lot more views than we do. They have a huge amount of data, which they take in. They do a great job moving through it very quickly and processing the results and officiating them. So, yeah, who knows how this will work out. For my money, though, yeah, I mean, my focus is on Rossi and South in second and third. Well, Kate's usually tuning in to social media and Twitch chat and all that, but now she's able to get it right from the horse's mouth. Let's go over to her, standing by with F4H. I am so excited to be able to do that. I just want to ask Sterilizer, are you going to come and race with us every Wednesday in, in Seattle? This place, this was great for you. What was, uh, what was it about that car track combo that worked? Um, I'm not really sure if it was the car track combo or just the fact that I got past first place in the first corner. I was able to pull away. I was really fortunate that the pack was fighting with each other, and I was able to build a really good lead. And you know, once Rossi was behind me, I saw he was catching me, but <laughs> he was too far behind. So I ended up sticking it to the end, and I'm really happy that I maintained my composure and I finished it up. For cool, calm, and collected for sure. Diablo, what's your takeaway from uh, the little incident? There's two sides to every story, my friend. Um, well, I mean, I, I'm going to say that I got lucky in that race, um, <laughs> strictly because I, the BMW, I was struggling a little bit for pace, and I had JSR South right behind me the whole time in the SLS, which was much better in the brakes, much better in the turns, but the BMW is quicker in the straights, so he'd catch up to me in the corners, and I'd pull away in the straights, I kept going back and forth. One mistake, he got around me, <laughs> um, and after that, it was just trying to hold on to the very end. I, um, I feel like I had engine damage at the end of the race, and I was losing ground quickly, but... Mm -hmm. Um, to hold on to fourth uh, against a pack like this, I'm happy about it. I can't complain. All right, can't complain. Now, uh, Revs, can you complain? Is there anything you want to say oh, about man. that race? <laughs> the start of the race didn't go well. The whole entire race didn't go well at all. <laughs> uh, we're just beating and banging into each other the entire time. Uh, yeah, the braking points are so different for mm -hmm. each car. So I would get on my brakes, and then a BMW would get on its <laughs> brakes, and I would slam into them. Ah. But... Uh, Sorry, Chemical. Uh, <laughs> He's gonna let that <laughs> I ruined him a couple times. Uh, but yeah, it was it was a mess. But yeah. yeah, well, that's what this racing thing is all about. You know, and Scott, as you said, uh, keep it up on Twitch. There's a couple of uh, things happening on chat. And I just want to let Sterilizer know that bar bar Bouncing Barman said, having had my rear end royally spanked by Sterilizer over the years, it's <laughs> nice to see him out here racing. <laughs> yeah, bouncing bar man. It's it's yeah. It's been a trip. I remember meeting you in the Twitch stream and you know giving tips. And I've come a long way since then. So it's really nice to be up here. And I'm glad you're out there supporting me, man. Yeah, that's what this is all about, really. Diablo, for you, I think kind of overseeing this team and seeing the growth of this team. You and I were talking early on, and the transition just in the two years that you've been a part of it. It's really truly incredible. 
Yeah, um, after I took over, it's funny now that the roster that I started with as team president and Forza team lead is completely different, except for me. None of these guys were here when I started. <laughs> um, we've recruited people, and some people have come and gone since. Um, I had a great battle with JSR South. He was on FRHs over mm -hmm. the wintertime, um, chose to go to JSR, great person. Um, but yeah, leading this team and to be here now is I I didn't think I'd get this opportunity mm -hmm. um, to be here in Seattle, you know, to meet the uh, Turn Ten crew. So to be here, uh, considering a few years ago, Forza really didn't have any of this, the studio right. set up and anything. Insane, it's right? it's it's beyond what I could have imagined. You know, going to Le Mans last year, um, that that's a pilgrimage for any race mm -hmm. fan. So to have that opportunity, you know can't be thankful enough. How have you seen the team progress? I mean, you're saying these guys weren't even here, right? Of course not. But right. the, the growth of the team, the growth of these drivers, the, the growth together that, I mean, here yeah. you are. Oh, oh it's been a, it's been absolutely incredible. You know, there's people here, um, like our, we have Venom, who was mm -hmm. top five, who was top five last year, wasn't able to go to Le Mans. He actually had a concurrent trip to get a full paid trip to go to Le Mans to watch as a spectator with Michelin. Um, he was top five, and this year he's, I think he was ranked fourth going into Mexico this time. He's an incredible driver. Dino, um, our, one of our English drivers, he's he came back from a long hiatus right. off well back, four, so two and three. His pace is still there. You know, these guys are here. It's, Griffin's been here a month and look at him winning <laughs> races. You know, Paul, you know, Paul and I met um, at a LAN event in San Francisco two years ago. We were just kind of joking about that back and forth of how, mm -hmm. you know, he has improved in pace over just a short amount of time. You only joined the team over the winter times, I believe, in February. And now, you know, you're banging on the door for possibly going to London top 24. I, I couldn't be more proud of the guys that are on the race team. And, it, and you know, if I get to enjoy a little success, too cool but well, I'm, I'm, I'm in it for these guys not for myself well I wanted to talk about that because a couple of weeks ago I, I saw on social media you posting that going to Mexico City like to you that is it's big and that was kind of like an end-all be-all goal for you for this season yeah the to make it to Mexico this this competition series two playoffs Forza RC for 2018 is the hardest competition I've ever been in the mm -hmm. the competition stuff there's only maybe a few drivers here and there that are sitting out or have time commitments that they can't make. But this is, I have never fought harder to get into <laughs> top 36. Um, so, and the tweet that I made, I said, I'm not going to London um, based off because I wouldn't have made it there on town. I just, I just don't have quite the pace to be top 24. Um, and I, I would have liked to have gone to as, as a spectator, but uh, plans change, work change. You know, I work a full-time job, so I'm not able to go. Um, but I'll be cheering these guys on on Twitch, and you know I'll be like Barnes about me. I'll sit in the chat <laughs> like, "Come on, let's go, guys!" You know. Um, but yeah, it's it's been it's been great to see the progression that we've made, um, even since the winter time. You know, it's it's there's been a lot of change, but we've we've stood strong. Yeah. Well, more with F4H coming up here. But gentlemen, over at the desk, I mean, the global leaderboard, the intensity that these guys are really feeling, it's it's truly, it, it can't be put to shame by any means. Yeah, you're so right, Kate. And it's all about the 36, uh, you know, that Diablo was talking about. You're just, you're, you're trying to get there, right? You're just, um, that's the struggle. That's why you come out and race week after week uh, to, to try to put yourself in a position to be in one of those uh, series playoffs with with the thoughts of of London down uh, down the road, knowing you got to score some points. It's great hearing Diablo talk about it, isn't it? Because there's so many unquantifiable things that go into it. You know, the emotional investment of the team captains, of the drivers, all the people working really hard, and you can't put a number on that. But at the end of the day, you have to be inside of that that 36 to make it into the competition. And sometimes it seems so arbitrary. But yeah. It, what a great effort from all the teams who have come out this year. And it just shines a light on that. It's great having these guys in the studio. Well, we got some real consistent drivers. You take a look at the top 12 here at the Series 2 leaderboard. Of course, that's my man Hard BR. Now Zoom still at the top. Lightning over there in North Carolina. They're in number two. Box, your Series 1 champion. Still racing consistently, maybe not at a, at a pace he wants to be at, but he's still in the top three. I love how the top three of this competition are all from different regions. We've got the, the leader from LATAM, the leader from North America, and the leader from EMEA, all tucked in there on the top of this table, Zoom, Lightning, and Box, and we know it's going to be an amazing race between them and Mexico. Well, there's a member of F4H right there, Venom, sitting there in fourth. He's maybe been the most consistent racer uh, that we've had over Series 1 and 2. He's just been rocking along in that top five. Venom is just so, so quick and clever, and he's just a great driver. Um, he's, he's, very, he's very rounded as a driver as well. He's someone who I really think deserves a Forza Racing Championship, someone who could do really well at Mexico and possibly even take the win. Just hasn't had that luck yet. Well, it's all about 
not only 12, it's 36, right? You got three groups of 12 that'll be going down to Mexico City. See that group one. Who jumps out to you in, in group one? You know you got your favorites, but is there... Uh, oh, there's a... <laughs> I, I, where was I going? Number nine Looks down like the there. the spider's caught himself a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first time seeing the group, actually. This is my first time seeing this, so it's fascinating to see which drivers are going to be coming up against each other in the first round of the Mexico playoffs. Of course, I'm... I said this... Uh, on a stream on Monday as well. I'm very curious to see Billy Sue race in the championship um, in, in Mexico because he's a little bit out of position. He missed out on weeks three and four of the, of the weekly races, lost a lot of points there. So he's maybe further down the grid than he deserves to be. Might be a mover at the championship finals. Well, uh, group one might be the strongest group. I know, <laughs> and, that, and that's crazy because you got Zoom Force One and Roadrunner there, Billy Sue, some dark horses there. Moving around to group two, Lightning and Mitch and Wesley and Rossi. Those are three fast guys, but you have Diablo in studio here, uh, but you got some veterans in Davy Skills and Harmonic that really perform well in a land environment. Yeah, aren't, aren't Mitch and Rossi in one group together? Isn't that just fireworks <laughs> waiting to happen? Those two used to be teammates. That's they right. used to be, you know, That's good right. buddies. Now Mitch off at Williams, Rossi lead driver again at JSR. I want to see Mitch and Lightning as well on track together. How rarely do we see that? And then in group three, you got my good friend Craviator down there. I don't want to forget about him, but you got Box. <laughs> Uh, the German trying to repeat as uh, a Series 2 champ there, but Venom, Lage, Seven. Uh, that's an interesting group as well. And then right there at the very bottom, there's a guy named Sterilizer who's hanging out with us today who's going to have an opportunity to make some moves. Very, very bueno. I mean, if Sterilizer takes his momentum from today and yeah. brings it to Mexico, he can be up that pack in no time at all. Box, as you say, the champion from the Seattle playoffs, we're going to be painting a big target on his back because everyone is going to want to overtake him. Right as rain. So there's the 36 that will be joining us down in Mexico City for the Series 2 playoffs. And you're right. And 4 h getting a little taste of a land environment today. Not, not, of course, the, the pressure isn't as much, Kate, as we'll be facing down in Mexico City, but any taste is a good taste. Absolutely. I think we're going to have a lot of, by the way, side note, I think we're going to have a lot of good tastes in Mexico City yeah. if we're going to talk food. Uh, <laughs> That's what, yeah. what's important to me. I'm I sorry, could talk food. a little food, sure. <laughs> no, I think it's really, it's going to be a lot of fun, and as these guys are kind of checking out that driver roster, really for the first time, seeing where they stand, how it's going to shake out, they were all kind of just shaking their head. They're not, not a lot of words to, <laughs> to say to what's going to happen in Mexico City. I can say, though, I think a lot of people are looking forward to the shakedown. Well, you got Lage and Box in the same group, right? Those are guys that are cut from a championship cloth. You also have Roadrunner out there in group one. So you, you have your favorites that have been racing with a lot of pace mm. through these, especially series two, but you know you got some favorites in there as well that are gonna be putting a lot of pressure on them, especially in, in a face and face environment, which is a lot different than being online. That was what I was gonna say, you know, Scott. I think that's what's so neat about getting these guys in the same environment is they're so used to racing by themselves, wherever that might be. And I, that's what I was asking them. I say, how different is this now? And it, it is, it's, they're still talking in chats between the races, of course, you guys all know this. But, you know, to be able to race side by side that brings a different heat and I can think back to box in that series one playoff and how intense from the mental the physical side that this competition really brings out in these drivers especially side by side and Al you need a little bit of luck you do need a little bit of luck um, you know box maybe had a little bit of luck last time out you know some some drivers came together lightning and Leish, mm -hmm. notably at Suzuka got into one another and that was a little bit of luck for box maybe later on I think what's really notable for me after the Series 2, all the Series 2 that we've seen, you know, the, the weekly races we've been coming to watch here, is how many drivers are fighting for their reputation. How many of them feel like they're underperforming and feel like they have something to prove Absolutely. in Mexico? What a lot of people there are with that kind of feeling. I think that's probably very fair to say and how proving to yourself but now proving to the community as this community is growing and growing and growing that it's going to be it's going to come down to which guys stay with the grow who are growing with the series too. Let's take a look at it just one more time because for a lot of folks out there this was their first time seeing the, that 36 and Allie, I know that you get in the nerd cave a lot. <laughs> who, out, who out there has to make moves to get to London? I mean, I, I don't want to overlook Mexico City, but once we get down there, yeah. which one of these 36 or, or a few of them have to make uh, a real splash down there in Mexico to have a chance at London? Well, I can tell you there aren't a lot of drivers out there who are actually locked 
at this point, right. who actually already have it set up. I'm pretty sure that people like Revs, they really need to work hard at the playoffs and do well there. So that's someone who's in the studio with us right now to get to London. Uh, as well as that, Forza Europa, somebody who used to be in the right. AMS team, uh, he, if he does well at the Mexico playoffs, I think could earn himself a place in London as well. There are more than that, there are a few more, and we'll do that breakdown later on. But yeah, some really interesting stories yeah, in there. Yeah, some privateer action down mm -hmm. there with Europa. For sure. I mean, you know, and what an interesting, what an interesting privateer he is as well, because <laughs> he, he comes from kind of uh, the community and the, uh, a group of people who practice together, you know, maybe AMS kind of broke apart, but they still practice together, I think, a lot sure. of them. And so, yeah, privateer by name, maybe a little bit more of a team nature to how he plays the game. Well, we'll see how it all shakes down in London, in Mexico City. But right now, let's go ahead and take a look at those final results. As we weren't exactly sure what was going to come about, we knew there was probably some action, though. <laughs> South, sorry, sir. A 10-second penalty. I didn't see it, <laughs> but uh, that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it was subtle, wasn't it? I wonder if I wonder if that was, I, mean, I guess it must have been that bump we saw with Diablo coming out of the final It certainly chicane. could have been earlier, too. It may have been earlier, because that seems, a 10-second penalty means that there's something you know, somewhat egregious that's happened there on track, and that looked very subtle to me. Uh, so South losing out there, coming all the way down from third to seventh, but Diablo moving up a position, Mr. Jack, Papai, Chemical, all of those drivers making some gains. And we got to remember, folks, this is team oriented. So not only do you got to look at the name on the left, but the team on the right. And right now, F4H with a 1 3 <laughs> uh, uh, official result. That's not too bad. Yeah, good for them. You know, great start for, for F4H. TX3 not looking maybe as weak as maybe they could have done after that race. They weren't shining out there, but fourth and fifth is good consistency. <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh, Let's have an opportunity to, to see where we're sitting at after that here as your teams. Uh, you saw the individual there, but you know, 34 points for F4H, not nice too bad. Run. Nice and run. Something about being the home team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, too right, though. Too right. 11 points separating F4H from JSR. Uh, Rossi, <laughs> we can, this, is, this is shades of uh, the team invitational that we had back in, back in March. Rossi really carrying the JSR team to victory here, or to, uh, to so a, a place where they can compete from. Uh, 15 points for him, five for South and three for Type R. And then TX3 and TPR are a little further down. All right. All right. Well, it's really exciting. That's why I wanted to know if Sterilizer was just going to come race with us <laughs> each and every one of these <laughs> showdowns, because obviously he got out of the gate. He's feeling confident. All right, where you get a chance to get involved in the show, it's another poll. This one is very interesting. I think it has to do with the Silverstone. It has to do with Sebring. And in talking to Revs earlier today, he said with the Porsche, he definitely would lean a little bit more towards Sebring in this case. He said Silverstone, very momentum, important to carry, speed into those corners. The Porsche does not handle well over at Silverstone, whereas Sebring, it's more about those curves, slower co corners. Although those bumps can be brutal, the Porsche seems to favor it. So Vote for Sebring. <laughs> or you're dead to me. So much juice. We've got, we've got an option of cars in that last race. So That's Red's true. maybe given away that he's in the Porsche there a little bit. Some F4H tactics coming out. Ooh. <laughs> well, it is time to go racing, my friends. Let's do it. Let's do oddball it. Oddball cars. I think this is my favorite category, <laughs> if, I, if I do say so myself, oddball cars. I, I'm, I'm okay with that, because when you, when you get to these oddball scenarios, real strategy comes into play here. It does. There's such a large difference between the cars. Some of them are very, very heavy indeed. Other ones are very light. And the cars can uh, really, you know, if they, if they bump into each other, a light car and a heavy car, the heavy one's not going to move very much and the light one is going to fly off in a different direction. So it makes a very big difference which one you choose, which your dri what your driving style is, and how aggressive you are as a driver. Well, another thing that is really interesting about these teams and what has been happening all year round, which you guys probably are aware of this, is that team livery. And in talking to F4H earlier, they were talking about the guys who are really uh, have given their all with their team liveries, and I think it's a, it's a really special time to give them some homage and give them a little fist pound. I mean, just well done. Well done. Yeah, I mean, what a great job these drivers have been doing, these painters have been doing, I should say, uh, making paints for these teams. And I love that F-150 trophy truck. How awesome <laughs> is that? That's by Tofa. Tofa stepped in as TX3's painter earlier this year uh, and has just picked it up and ran with it. I absolutely love the designs he's doing. Awesome. Maybe my favorite guy on TX3. Yeah? I'll, I'll be honest with you. Just super nice guy, super talented, and it looks, looks really good in that F-150. I mean, this truck as well, 
massive spongy suspension. It's made it. to go, yeah, it's made to jump over things and smash through stuff. Racing it on a track is a little bit difficult. You know what's interesting about the trophy truck? I cover off-road racing out, outside, and I, I just think there's some of those powerful 900 horsepower trucks, as you see at, at Plus Racing. And you're right, taking them onto a track, as opposed to being in the dirt, is going to be a completely different world, uh, for sure. All right, next up is the Brat. You know, TBR, well done. I want to drive around in a Brat. <laughs> it's awesome, right? And light, <laughs> a, a light little car as well, you know, a little... Uh, Scrabbly light dirt car painted beautifully by AB Graphics, who um, has done I such a it. yeah done a great job with TPR's paints. So yeah, I'm going to say this about every painter out there, aren't I? But they are beautiful cars that these guys make. And I, some, I, some about those back seats. I was going to uh, say, I mean, uh, not not the safest. You don't want to put the kids back there. I feel like it'd be just a good uh, go to the beach, put your cooler in the back. I'm, hang I'm out. okay with that. Yeah, sure. But I like the way that you just said that, Ali. It's a beautiful. And uh, uh, Subaru Brat, beautiful. <laughs> same sentence. I don't know. I think it's a lot of fun. I mean, you've got okay. to work quite hard to make that car beautiful, <laughs> right? So what a great job he's done. <laughs> and, and of course, you guys have chosen the Maserati here today. Oh, wow. Don't be disappointed, you two. Both of you. Sure. I mean, you know, throw the soccer balls in the back, go to the, go to the grocery <laughs> store, get, get, your, get your list done. Did I hear you saw one earlier today in real life? We did. We were, uh, Allie and I were out having biscuits, and one drove by. He was telling me some boring British story, so I wasn't really... <laughs> I didn't point I it out to him, but it did, it did come rolling through <laughs> Thank downtown. You, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. So uh, FLG, the Ford delivery guy, uh, painting this as he has for so many of, of uh, the F4H paints this year, and what an incredible job he does! Absolutely beautiful paints. He was talking about on Twitter just how many cars he's painted mm -hmm. this week. Uh, I don't think FLG has slept in a while. Super what a cool. talent. Yeah, what a talent. And they're all so talented. And, uh, you know, you just look at these cars, and it, it's what brings the track to life. It's what makes our, makes our races so colorful. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've got, you all have to have such a huge amount of respect for the painters who do this. Well, those are the cars. Sorry, Evo. <laughs> <laughs> Those Dis are the cars. <laughs> <laughs> the disappointment's actually real. It is. It is. <laughs> so genuinely, I love that Evo. Real. I love it. And, and uh, instead, we've got like a four by four Maserati. It's the same yeah. look he makes when Billy Sue spins out. <laughs> that is also true. Let's take a look at the track that we're going to have these three cars out on in our oddball race number two, and they're going to oh. have some work to do here. Oh my goodness. My favorite track of all times, my friends. That's only because I'm partial. <laughs> 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 Off to Indianapolis. Uh, it's the Grand Prix circuit. <laughs> so uh, a bit of a bit of a flat circuit. It's on the yes. infield of an oval. And accuracy here. It's all about you know, navigating those curves and really pinpoint accuracy as you go through the turns. I was there last weekend. It was not that dry. I can guarantee you. Here is the grid here for race number two. Sterilizer's going to be out in front. Rossi Diablo. There's one, two, three. And then you got Mr. Jack Papai. Chemical, if he can keep it between the lines. Of course, he, he didn't have much choice. <laughs> that wasn't from his own doing. Uh, but this is a big race for points here in race number two. Yep, TPR have something to prove. TX3 has something to prove. And all these cars piling down towards T1. This is the oddball race. So it's four by four everywhere. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can say cars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Every, everyone's got an off-road capability as we go around Indy. And here we go, lap one of nine, and this is going to put them to the test. And at some point, yeah, I see this is just, you got you're going to have a lot of physicality and weight, just overall mass of being a part of these nine laps. Wow, look at Diablo there, loosing it through the inside of three drivers through the outer out of sector one. Diablo looking a little bit bullied at the start of this race by the larger. Uh, F-150 trophy trucks. Imagine to make that Subaru Brat go to town on a few people through Sector 1. Yeah, it looked like Papai there in the F-150, I believe, just couldn't make the turn. Started going sideways, couldn't hold the grip. And by the time he did, he was found himself all the way back in 10th. Sterilizer right here in the middle of the pack in the Maserati. And what a great job he did in race one, bringing that victory. Sterilizer's going to have a harder job this time round, starting from the mid-pack. But he looks like he's doing well, moving up through this field. We're now on board with two brats battling it out for fifth position. That's Diablo and South with Revs just up ahead. Diablo in six. Zermatt's right behind him. They're south to the inside. I, I think this Subaru brat is going to be the one to watch. 
Everyone else just trying to find some spot here. Chemical. There is no line but a defensive line when you talk about this big F-150. And Maserati moving to the inside as they're coming back to the start finish line here to start lap number two. Yeah, and the F-150 putting down all of that 450 horsepower as it heads down the start finish line. 5,000 pounds is what that car weighs, so it's got a huge amount of momentum. You're going to see him jumping on the brakes very early indeed to rub that speed off. Every car we have out here on the track is all-wheel drive, but that Maserati heavy itself at 4,600 pounds, so it's it's a little bit lighter than the trophy truck, but obviously does not have the horsepower and torque to be able to keep up with it on the straight line. Yeah, I mean, Maserati, they didn't skimp too much on what's, uh, you know, what's inside of that bonnet under that hood, as you'd say. It's a twin yeah. turbo V8, V6 under there, excuse me. Um, but yeah, not looking like it's going to be able to beat the uh, racing dedicated trophy trucks out there on the straight line bits, at least. Yeah, you can see revs flying by right there to your outside. As now we're on board once again in this Maserati painted by FLG here in lap two of nine. And there is TX3 up there in third position. And that is Mr. Jack that's driving that Maserati. Just can't seem to catch up to Chemical. And some of the corners here at Indy, he does pick up a little bit of pace there and gets closer. But actually, Chemical, Chemical's doing a fantastic job driving this F-150. Chemical's doing great. Sitting there in second, just biding his time. He's also in the F-150 with Rossi up there leading the race in the trophy truck as well. Are you a bit surprised that the F-150s, the, uh, both of them are, are the two out in front, one and two? You know, natu on natural pace alone, the F-150 may be the fastest car out there, but it's one of the least consistent cars. That's because the suspension is so soft and the car rolls around, moves its weight around so much. It's like driving around on the top of a spring. That's I don't know if you around. saw it there, but it, you know, the, especially in those front two tires, it really sits at extreme negative camber. Oh yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Really riding on the inside of that tread. Here in lap three of nine, which you, know, you, you talk about just your historic road cars. This is, is you see someone getting a little loose there. Is that? That's not Rossi or Chemicals. It's not the leading F-150s. And that's going to be Revs. Entry. Yeah, it's Revs. Who's in the building with us, a.k.a. Paul. Slipping back behind his teammate Diablo. So we saw Diablo earlier on fighting it out behind Revs. Now those two drivers move forward in the Subaru Brats. Uh, Diablo and Davey Skills, Revs sticking behind them. Yeah, they're trying to have to work, maybe a little shake and bake time in seventh and eighth there. But Rossi, how about it? The F-150 trophy truck here in our oddball race. Because you've tuned in right now and you're like, oh, sweet, man. Uh, you know, the, the FRC's on the, the Forza Racing Championship. I'm going to check it out. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> uh, well, we're just celebrating Series 2 as we're heading down to Mexico City. So we're having some team races uh, this week. And there is Revs riding along in eighth right behind his teammate Diablo. And currently F4H up by double digits in the team standings, but with a majority of their team in the middle to the back of the pack, there could be an opportunity for JSR to grab some serious points here. Yeah, JSR especially, Chemical running in fourth. Rossi, who came second in race number one, is now leading race number two. We're only at the halfway point, so plenty of race remaining. But Rossi looking very strong here. Rebs getting to the point where the F-150 really gets to set loose down that back straight and making up a few feet there on the uh, on Type R, who's running in the Maserati behind him. Yeah, you know, you got those F-150s running up front, but Sterilizer representing F4H, he's actually all the way in the back. He's in 12th position. And we're gonna show you a little bit about how he got there in those first couple laps, as most of the trophy trucks have had success. Not so for F4H revs. You can see him Ooh. up there, and that's actually a spin out. So easy to do. All these drivers will be running sim steering. That means that their control inputs are what the front tires are going to be doing. You get no softening from the uh, from Forza's assists. And when the body weight of that Maserati moves from left to right, the whole thing can so easily just fly off the track. Rev's coming short there. That's what it called a sim twitch. Yeah. So it was it was sterilizer in that Maserati SUV having some issues. That sterilizer. I said revs, didn't I? Sterilizer. I think I, 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 think I might have messed this up from the get-go. <laughs> uh, but that's why he's running currently all the way in the back of the pack. 
He's dropped 11 spots in this race. So he's gone to the first to worse here in race number two, but we're still halfway through. And you can take some solace in, all right, it's a team event, right? Like, okay, uh, I'm not having the luck I would like to have in this one. That's when the other rest of the team has to try to pick up the slack. There's always going to be cars that are faster and cars that are slower, you know, and there's kind of a bogey car that people can pick up. Maybe Sterilizer, you know, he got lucky, he got the fastest car for the first race, uh, but maybe got the short straw for the second race because of it. You know, I, it, it works out that way sometimes. So but Sterilizer not managing to get much out of that match. It, but it seems like if you knew the F-150 was going to be, pun intended, the trophy car of this race, maybe you say, okay, since you're up front, you're, you're, lead, you're going to be leading the pack. We need to give you the F-150 to start off. Yeah, maybe, you know. Uh, but it, maybe it takes, had, it takes had no hard confidence. leadership to do that. It takes, you know, yeah. it's, it's a little bit Ferrari. You know, it's a little bit sort of <laughs> do some team orders, get one sure. drive, get some preference towards one driver. Uh, a few of these teams are going to be Hey, 20 points is 20 points, lot. however you get it done. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Lap five and nine here on Indy. Grand Prix circuit. And uh, I think a lot of our drivers right now are wishing it was the oval. <laughs> a few of them will be. That is JSR South, though, attacking Mr. Jack in the Brat uh, up against the Maserati. And that's very relevant because JSR are doing the best job out here in race number two. Rossi's leading the way, and his teammate is fighting for that last step on the podium. Well, Mr. Jack right there in third, right along with JSR South. And he, they're going to have some opportunities here. This is where you got to use that defensive line, use that width of the Maserati. And right now, you got to live up to the car's name. You literally need to be a brat here. <laughs> I think I think the brat struggles on the straights. You can see it there. Mr. Yep. Jack's starting to pull away, and it closes up in the corners. That's difficult uh, for South, and that's because the end of this track, the last moment before the line, is a straight. So even if he's leading out the last corner, there's potential there that Mr. Jack can just nip past him in a run to the line. So he's going to have to work hard here south to take that third place. Rossi out in front. That chemical. Couple car links back from him in lap six of nine. Rossi has looked really strong here in race two. That one more race to come here today. And that's going to be the first time that we've seen tuning in the FRC. So that's going to be interesting in our well, GT race at the end of the day. I've I, I, I've always wanted to see tuning in the Forza Racing Championship, and what a um, it's great it's great to have it here for one race. It's difficult to make it in a way which is uh, is fair, especially in an individual competition, which is what we've got this year. Uh, but it's great to have it in this team event. Uh, JSR, of course, have one of the most famous tuners in the game, JSR Lee Campbell, uh, to help out with their tunes. I wonder if he's had any involvement. Um, there, you, there would, are, you would assume so. You would think so. These people, they have magic tricks that they can do to these cars to make them faster. And uh, a JSR, you know, all the, all the team members there will be great at tuning. But yeah, a few people, a few specialists out there who might have to give them that, that little bit of je ne sais quoi. Yeah, get a little tenth here, a tenth there. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, and it's about comfort as well. It's about speed on the track. It's also about driver comfort. How much do I like driving this car? How much am I having to adjust what I like doing? Uh, to make the car faster. Yeah, you talk about real world racing. That's really what it's all about. That you know, those those guys, those geniuses, the, 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 with the magic touch, a, a driver can come in and say, "Hey, it, it's, it's a bit heavy in, in turn nine. Yeah. They say, "Don't worry, just jump out, get a cup of coffee, come back <laughs> in 15 minutes, and we'll have it set up." That's right. A few notches here, a few more degrees there, and uh, the car has a little bit of a different character. Put a cooling pack on a on a camera. That's, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's, that's magic all you spray needed. The tires. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lap seven of nine. And Rossi, first time his livery is actually just makes sense to me. It's at least a teak, <laughs> <laughs> or a pine. I'm not sure. Uh, Either it smells way, beautiful, beautiful either way. Yeah, that's right, it is. The, the car smells amazing. <laughs> I wish I wish you were all here so you could smell Rossi's car. It is an <laughs> incredible smelling thing. Seven of nine. At, at some point, you know, these video games and consoles are going so far. You, you know, we got 3D. At some point, we'll hit 4D and 5D. You'll have, you'll yeah. have, you'll have complete senses. We'll have like a scratch and sniff on the front of your, <laughs> <laughs> front of your phone. Um, Rossi, though, 
you know, in all seriousness, what a great job he's doing. He, he, he has there's something with team events in JSR Rossi. Uh, he's someone who will be mid pack. I don't want to call him mid pack. He's very very fast, but he doesn't tend to shine in individual competition. Change it around, put him in a team event, and suddenly he's taking wins. He's right at the very top of the competition. So Rossi, someone who I'm just super interested to watch uh, throughout this competition. Well, this is going to be a huge lap in the battle for three and four. As you can see, South uh, not testing the track limits, but maybe challenging the track limits at this point to try to get every edge he can uh, out of Mr. Jack, who, as you mentioned, just continues every time we come out of turn 14 across the start finish line. So at some point, he's going to have to overtake him really before turn 12 and maybe turn that chicane of of 12 and 13, it's not really a true chicane, it's a it's a, it's a right-hander and immediately back to the left. I mean, I guess you could call it extended chicane. Uh, that's That that might be his best opportunity. I mean, we talked about smell -o vision and South can, <laughs> he can smell third position here. It must be, it, it's, a, it's very tempting to start being more aggressive with the track limits, to start finding more places where you can find speed around the circuit. Uh, if you have- Oh my goodness, he's there, going to the, the inside here. South sending it beautifully done up the inside of Mr. Jack. I think he's done this move previously, and Mr. Jack's been straight back through on him. He can't let it hold. Now this he's going to have a defensive line here. Holding it, holding it. Can he it. hold off while Zermatt comes up? Zermatt is South's absolute dream right now because he's slowing down Mr. Jack in that battle for fourth. This is giving South the opportunity that he needs. There's just one lap remaining after this, so South isn't far away from holding down this third position. And Davy Skills also getting in the mix causing uh, some serious traffic to negotiate as we get up on the oval, coming back to the start finish line. And really South picked the perfect moment to throw that move. And now Mr. Jack gonna have to have a bit of revenge factor in our final lap here at Indy. And you can see that Maserati can really go on the straight. For us, I was looking, we, we were all looking backwards there from South as Mr. Jack rolled in behind and it looked like he was going to send it for a second. Bit of a dive bomb into turn one. Mr. Jack, much more respectful than that, pulls back eventually. But he had a little sniff there. He had a look. And to the inside. There through turn one and two. Back around three now. Here in the final lap, you can see Zermatt. He's not done. And he's starting to apply the pressure. And that might be the pressure that really JSR South needs to hold on to that third spot. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Jack running defense here against Zermatt. Zermatt to the inside. To it's the outside, under. excuse me, now back to the inside. He's looking everywhere for that over under. Davy Skills wants it as well. Davy Skills trying to follow Zermatt through here. Both of these Maseratis are going to disappear on the straight compared to Davy Skills. As Brat Davy Skills is in there, though. He's up the inside. Zermatt with tremendous pace and momentum coming off. Absolute butt clench there. <laughs> Mr. Jack losing the rear with Davy Skills up the inside. Well held. Well held. And Davy Skills trying to get a bit of an advantage on Zermatt, but I got the feeling that he is going to come back. Yeah, Rossi's going to come across the line with Chemical. There's one, two. Now it's all about this three, four, five battle. South will finish fourth. Who will finish fifth? Excuse me, Davy Skills in fourth. So South third, Davy Skills fourth. Drag race to the line, but Mr. Jack looks like he's going to take fifth. From Zermatt, he's gonna have to settle for sixth place. What a race! A little bumping and grinding, race. a little yeah. bumping and grinding there at oh. the end. Uh, Zermatt had some tremendous momentum to throw on Mr. Jack there, and really felt like he was gonna slide in. But a great job by Mr. Jack, holding his composure, straightening it back up, and having the opportunity uh, to finish where his team needed him to finish right there. And you could you could see the power of team racing right there. Yeah. It was Zermatt and Davy Skills, both members of TPR, threatening Mr. Jack, who, like you say, held his nerve, yeah. stood his ground against two drivers, both teaming up together who wanted to get by. And, well driven. And you think on those team comms, are they, are they saying oh, yeah. at that point, all right, I'm, go I'm going through and you're coming with me. Yeah, I'm coming through or like, I'm not going to attack right now. I'm going to hold back and let you run your line. You know, lots and lots of uh, communication yeah. between the drivers that allows them to race so cleanly and so closely together. Yeah, while while they're battling, Davy Skills is just me me <laughs> coming through, coming on through <laughs> for that fourth position, <laughs> just waving from the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
What a race number two. We're in the adjudication process and can't say enough about Rossi and Chemical out in front, really just one and two. I, I don't see any sort of adjudication for them because they were just pretty much going in tandem around Indy there. But that three through seven, yeah. uh, some of those people got some explaining to do maybe. I mean, they are the marshals. I've got to talk about the marshals for a second. <laughs> okay, here. sure. We're going to marshal talk. <laughs> sure. That's I'm right. Grab, grab your cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, they've got to change their attitude, the marshals, from different race to different race. Because we, we have a lot of different yeah. cars here at the Forza Racing Championship. You know, so 700 cars in the game, lots of different divisions, and uh, lots of ways to do motorsport. Some of them, yeah, you can't tap each other. Otherwise, bits fly off the car. Carbon sure. fiber goes everywhere. You put them in heavy-duty off-road cars. Sure. The marshals aren't going to slap anyone on the wrist if they're grinding a little bit. It's more it's with the egregious fouls. I think that's the second time I've used egregious today. Yeah, I mean, Loving and, that word. And some of the, we talk about the difference between the cars with a lot of doubt, downforce, a lot of grip. You can really hold a line. Or, hey, I'm driving a big SUV and I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to keep my momentum around, you know, turn seven, for example. Right. And I'm going to fade a little bit. I'm not trying to fade. It's just going to happen. Yeah. And there was, there was a moment we saw when it was one of the F-150 trophy trucks coming down the inside of the corner. And on the outside of it was a Subaru Brat. And it's like, if that trophy truck just slides a little bit, that Brat is going miles out. Because sure. it's a huge amount of momentum that it carries with it. You know, that speed and the mass of the car combining together to just make a huge amount of force to push a little car out of the way. So... What you're saying is show a little bit of mercy. Yeah. Show a little show bit, a bit of, of forgiveness. Mercy. Let him race. <laughs> just, just, just let it happen. Lay back. It's going to be okay. Uh, but the thing that we're going to see here is F4H look really strong in race one. But in race number two, uh, we might have some change in some points. Let's take a look at the replay here of our oddball race with still one more race to go. But race number two had some fireworks between these three oddball cars. It did. The Maserati, the Brat, and the F-150 trophy truck. That was a big sim twitch there for Sterilizer, I think, in the Maserati. Yep. Uh, revs, Davy Skills, and this was Diablo. All three of those guys fighting it out on track as well. The two F4H guys maybe going a little bit kinder on each other than the TPR driver. Yeah, they're going to be well down the pack here. Of course, we have to wait for the adjudication process to see if they can gain some more points here. But how, how about Davy Skills? Just slowly just riding around the track. You can see a move there by Paul to the inside. But the patience of Davy Skills knowing his time was going to come at some point. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, Davy Skills, we talk about his experience a lot. He's a, one of the older drivers out there, one of the more experienced drivers. And he knows about patience. He knows about ha taking his opportunity when it arrives and not rushing things great race from him this is the move right here south that was the one i was talking about where he was challenging the track limits uh i'm not sure if it was three or four tires <laughs> that were off the track at this one point but he kept nipping at the hills of mr jack just waiting and waiting for this opportunity and finally got to the inside and was able to go by mr jack and then luckily here comes the tpr guys uh to come and make it a little bit tougher on Zermatt. And that was allowed at JSR South just to hold on to that podium position. Yeah, Mr. Jack must feel a bit hard done by there because South got through from JSR and then he got held back by the two TPR drivers. So two teams in a way conspiring to hold Mr. Jack back who did a great job to fight his way back into sixth. Well, let's take a look at the provisional results at that point. As you saw, a lot of bumping and grinding through this first race. Rossi up front. We talked about how Chemical raced so well. South coming into that podium position. Hopefully, it'll stick. Davy Skills just hanging around, uh, but, but actually a, a pretty entertaining race. Hugely entertaining for us. Some people it maybe not been so entertaining for was F4H. I didn't realize from the race order finish quite how difficult that was for them. So 8th, 10th, and 11th provisionally for F4H. Tough times. When you talk about fighting for her, they're still hanging around over here, and they're actually hanging out with Kate. Yeah, they haven't, they haven't moved out of their spots yet, but after that race, there's a chance that they may have. Diablo, your takeaways from that, because as a team, not what we saw from that first race. That didn't go very well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Moral you know, story? You know, yeah, no, uh, you know, Sterilizer was out front in the, in the Maserati. I think he would have preferred the Mitsubishi Evo. You thanks. and Ali both, my yeah, friend. Th thanks, <laughs> thanks for the vote on that. He uh, sim twitched off track. Um, 
I think it was first or second lap, and then the brat race pace was. It was a quick car, but yeah. it was getting out dragged on the straights really badly. So it was really hard to maintain a position once you got into it. Uh, I got passed a few times just off cars that were you know 20, 30 miles an hour quicker on the straights. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was that was a really tough race. I think this third race will go better with the with, um, with the Sport GT Icon cars. You know, cars we're a little bit more familiar with, yeah. and cars that uh, and possibly on a track that we're a little bit more familiar with too. Indy, the Indy GP track's tough. Yeah, well, it's my, I, I'm so partial to Indy. Any anything Indy, anything at that yeah, speedway, sure. I'm like, hey, I'm all for it. Okay, so Diablo, two things from chat that was picked up from you. Okay. Um, get that shifting times down. You just can't get them. Do you agree or disagree? Um. No, I don't agree with them because the re if anyone that's watched Forza replays, um, there's a little bit of a delay on when a shift is. You know, we're using manual clutch and all of those cars just now. Um, if there's a little bit of delay in replay, that's one thing. But I, I mean, we're doing. The right. I've, I've been racing for a while. <laughs> I, I, I know how to shift the car. So okay, I gotta but, disagree with that. <laughs> okay, and he's smiling right now. I just want you to be aware <laughs> because someone asked if you ever smile. To me, you smile. You I have, smiling I have all a, day. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> yeah, I was just mentioning to you. So if anyone's seen the movie School of Rock, you know, Jack Black, um, I think it was, you know, mid 2000s movie, uh, he makes a joke about um, the basses, you know, the, the way you play basses, <laughs> you just. You just, you don't have a smile. I, I'm a bassist, you know, I grew up playing jazz bass. So I'm not going to smile when I'm focused. It's just not it's something I'm going to do. Like, some people stick their tongues out, some people smile, some people raise their hands in the air, and you yeah. just are focused face. Yeah, just, yeah, just very focused. Cool. If, if, I'm having, if I was further up front, I probably would have cracked a smile. <laughs> Eighth isn't really what I wanna, where I want to be. Sterilizer, one guy who was not smiling throughout that uh, little race was Sterilizer. All right, we saw that replay. Uh, from your perspective, what happened? Well, uh, first lap, I was towards the front. Um, the trophy trucks had passed me early because they're really fast in a straight line. So I, was, I just funneled behind them, and I got on the grass coming out of the infield, and simulation steering did its thing, turned me right around, and all the way <laughs> in last place, caught up to another tro trophy truck, and, you know, I kept trying to get past, but, you know, I felt like there might have been some intentional blocking in there. I don't know, but <laughs> I couldn't get past for about six laps, made up one position, finished 11th, just just the bad race. So hopefully next race goes better. Ah, crossing the fingers for you. For the whole team here, that was a bit rough around the edges, if you will. All right, it, uh, that was oddball, right? We, we're talking the Brat. We're talking the trophy truck, the Maserati. Well, a little champ versus champ. They wanted to get in on the oddball action as well. Take a look. We have champ defense. Defending IndyCar Series champ Joseph Newgarden versus Tanner Faust. <laughs> My name's Tanner Faust. I drive a Rallycross, and of course, I'm a beast on Forza. I'm Joseph Newgarden, and I'm a professional race car driver in the Verizon IndyCar Series with Team Penske. In this challenge, I've chosen a wicked little car, a 1965 notchback Type 3 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. It's a mouthful, and it's slow. It goes 0 to 60 in just under 20 seconds, makes 65 horsepower, and tops out at 84 miles an hour. All numbers that Joseph is completely unfamiliar with, and hopefully that gives me an advantage. Tell me more about this car. Why Why this one? Uh, because it's gorgeous. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. It's, it's pretty, but it's, it's very old. It's a classic, man. It's not going to go very fast. I've chosen Long Beach. I know this place pretty well. I know you know part of it, but not quite like I know it. I'm not saying you're predictable. I'm just saying that Long Beach being a track you've raced many, many times, of course you would choose that. I would do the same thing. So I'm handicapping you with a 65 horsepower Volkswagen that tops out at 85 miles an hour. So buckle up. Oh, look at this. Wow. This, this is barely moving. We may run out of film by the Wait, time we get to my segment. Oh, so, so much cheating. I feel like that was legal. It's so your speed. This is where you live right here. <laughs> You're like 50 to 60 miles an hour is where Tanner lives. Let's break it down. This is about momentum. I mean, I like momentum, but I like momentum at like 120, not 50. Look at this. Just over every curb possible, completely cutting the track. Oh, you're keeping second. I think that was actually a smart move. Good luck, my friend. Ooh, is lap. it hot in here? Driving in socks is an interesting strategy. You know, I think that's that's probably helped your game a bit. Feel the Karma Gear, you really have to be tuned into exactly what's going on. Do you think so? I think yeah. you need zero feel for the Karma Gear. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually nervous about this one for some reason because it's so slow. That'll all go away as soon as you feel 
that. <laughs> I just feel like there's too much time to mess it up. And that's what I don't like about this challenge. That was annoyingly good. I'm gonna get this, bud. <sighs> Two turns in. Let's just get comfortable, huh? Yeah, this is obnoxious. This is my last, this is my only hope, really. Any of the fast stuff, I just need you to make a mistake for three laps. That do you I see the woodwork on. on the dash, though? It's just pretty, let, me, let me do my lap. pretty here, nice. Bud. Ugh, second gear oh, is better. Oh man, that's solid. Second Dude, this is gear gonna is be better. Oh, this is gonna be 10 seconds faster. No, it's not. Look how much time it takes to get to the start finish line. Some victory donuts in the Karma Gear. This should be good. Uh, mm. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're, you're not going to get any burnouts, donuts, or anything in that one. Uh, Joseph Newgard in the champ. I, I like the dash as well. The wooden <laughs> dash. That was lovely. Sure, the wooden yeah. desk here. It's Ooh. Ooh, splendid. Feels nice. What is this? Plastic? I think, yeah, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is a poly wood, I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got the final results ready for race number two in the oddball race. And I tell you what, when you look at this, nothing. Nada. No changes. I, I like that's that. That's what you thought. That's what you thought. You know, a little bit of bumping, a little bit of a little bit of that side-by-side -side action. But that's what we kind of, it's kind of what we wanted, isn't it? Put him in four-wheel drive heavy cars. Uh, and Rossi takes the win. So Rossi with a first and a second looking Pretty dominant out there. Well, the question right now is, is it enough for JSR to move up in the team points? They were trailing F4H after the beginning, and uh, boom, Massive. 60. And actually, TPR jumps F4H going into the final race. So that's going to put some serious pressure on F4H here in the studio to show out, to have an opportunity in our final race. Of course, TX3, all right. And, it's, it's getting a little late over there in Europe. Yeah, it's the, the day is progressing <laughs> in Europe, certainly. Uh, Mr. Jack, Papai, and Paps are definitely a, a three drivers who have raced together a long time. Would have been hoping maybe for a little bit better than this. Paps, Paps was out there, huh? <laughs> don't be that guy. I don't, I don't know if we've said his name yet. I'm just... I, mean, I saw Papaya. Of course, Mr. Jack yeah. has actually had a nice day. <laughs> they're, they're represent. They're top of the game. You know. I mean, I love TX3. Yeah, it was it was a, it was a tough one for them. Maybe at the start here. What I want to see from those guys is being a bit closer to each other on track. I want them to be driving together, maybe more consciously, and working together to to you know crack a few nuts up ahead. Well, it, it's still out there. To this, oh, yeah. this final race, you can finish podium. One, two, three. Take this whole thing. It doesn't matter where you are. As we move to race number three, we talked about the icons that we're going to have here, the ability to tune your car here in this final race, something we haven't seen. And there you see the Sport GT icon division, the 1982 911 Turbo 3.3. This thing still will cost you a pretty dime now, Dave. I, I want to, you know, we're coming to tuning cars here in the Forza Racing Championship, and what a difference Forza 7 has in terms of tuning compared to previous titles. We now have divisions, and that means there are set upgrades that you almost have to make. You have to bring your tire compound up to sport. You have to move your tire widths up to at least 315. There are, there are certain parameters into which you have to do this. Well, there's the 80s car that they're going to have to choose from as we've been racing through the decades. And what a difference it makes in throwing a little tune in there. Oh, yeah. On that 1982 911 that you go from uh, just a, sh uh, a shade under 300 horsepower. The next thing you know, you're well over 500 horsepower. And that's where we're going to really push our guys to the test. It'll, it'll put them to the test. Uh, another thing that will put the tune to the test with those Porsches is the rear engine right at the back of yep. the car. Stock, the cars on corner exit often pop a little bit of a wheelie, especially on the inside front tire. You can tune that out of it. Just stiffen up the anti-roll bars, make the car not move quite as much on its suspension, lower the ride height, and you can have that car keeping all four tires on the road, which is ideal at all times. Well, that's Ali's thoughts on it. Let's go over to Kate, who's hanging out with our guys. Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to get Diablo your opinion on this, because that rear engine of that 
1982 Porsche. Again, having to tune it out, as Allie just said, keeping those four tires on the ground. How difficult is that really? Uh, the 82 Porsche is a really hard car to tune. Those that have done Forza RC, I believe from last year, know kind of the horrors <laughs> of driving that car at Catalina National. Um, the biggest thing with this car is the body roll and the weight transfer. Porsches have, or the Porsche 911 has their engine behind the rear axle, which makes the weight distribution of the car really hard to drive. It's very unusual. So what you'll have is when you get on the throttle in these cars, they'll just go straight. They'll accelerate hard, but they will go straight the, the way the way it's pointing. You're not gonna be able to turn that well. So tuning this car, the biggest thing is making sure that the front wheels actually, when you turn, actually do what you want it to do. <laughs> and that's, uh, it's easier said than done. Oh, I think that's just, that's the case for all of these guys in, in these cars on these tracks, is having yeah. them do what you want them to actually do. And as we kind of move our way through the 2000s there, tuning those kinds of cars and the options that we have there, what's the different kind of challenges that are maybe presented? Um, I would say with the, with the other two cars um, that we have, you know, have cars like the Esprit, the Fair Lady, um, the Viper, those cars are much better at handling just inherently. They have a little bit wider tires. They're a little bit just bigger cars so they're going to handle a little bit better and the the biggest thing to figure out is what sort of build you want to put on the car do you want more power do you want more grip um do you want kind of a little bit of both um we have a choice between silverstone and sebring sebring is more of a power track and acceleration mm -hmm. track silverstone it's a little bit more of a momentum track but you can get away with having a high accelerating car because there are nice little short straights so um I guess it depends on your driving style and what you're really wanting to get out of the car. Okay, out of those 2000s, which ones did you guys pick? We we have gone with the Esprit for the 2000s. Oh. So um, I'm a big fan of that car myself. It's kind of a <laughs> very Bond-esque. Yeah, there's a little smile there out of you, Diablo. See, I, I can <laughs> smile, just, just so we're clear. <laughs> All right, let's move it back to the 90s now. Okay, a couple of different cars there. The challenges that you go from, like, the 82 Porsche, that rear engine, to the 90s, mm -hmm. what were some differences? Um, the difference between these cars, it, it wasn't really too hard of a decision to pick which car to drive. The, the 99 Viper is a very strong car, very good looking car. It's American, so we already have a bias towards it. Um, but it's a fun car to drive and just out of the box, the way that the car builds into the restrictions we have with the homologation special, the sport GT icons, it makes it one of the best cars in the group even regardless of the other decade cars. So that was an easy choice over the Aston and the Nissan. When of course over at Silverstone, we know the Porsche is gonna be quite a bit difficult on Silverstone driving around that thing. How did you guys choose who was driving what, not knowing the exact track? We just kind of picked <laughs> which we were best in. We all worked on tunes of the cars. Um, Griffin, you figured out really quickly that the Viper definitely suits your driving style. You got a tune that was really excellent for it. I see someone else picked it up. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to see how that goes. Um, and then it was a decision between uh, Paul and I to figure out if he was going to drive the Porsche or if I was going to drive the Esprit. Um, the 911 drives a little bit more of like a stock tune car like we've been doing for a lot of these Forza RC events. So he felt that he'd be strongest in that car and I took what was left. Oh, it's going to make it very interesting. Pa Paul knows that he was driving this Porsche early on, and I think he's <laughs> at Silverstone's maybe not the favorite track for that. He was going to prefer Sebring. Gentlemen, what do you think about that? Well, it could go either way at this point, you know, and they talked about you feeling like you had the opportunity where you found something in a tune, and then you get into the lobby and you go, oh, okay, well, l l <laughs> someone else did too. Someone else did too. I, I find it so hard to keep a secret. Sure. Scott, you know, like I, if I find something in a tune, if I find a way of making the car faster, I can't wait to tell people about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't tend to keep my advantages uh, until the race actually happens. Uh, so yeah, all these drivers, of course, in teams, and so they have a, a bit more of a prerogative to do that. All right, we'll see what track you guys picked out there here for race number three. And something tells me I'm going to be disappointed because that's <laughs> you got <di> yep you got <laughs> yes, disappointed with Evo, <laughs> and I got disappointed here with Silverstone, the home of motorsport. It's not great. Nothing Britain. disappointing about it. It's just good Britain. <laughs> Let's take a look at the grid order. Revs is out in front. Paps. Papai, and of course, this, if you're just showing us, this is a reverse grid. This is a reverse grid. So yeah, some of the lowest scoring drivers uh, from the earlier heats at the front of this grid. Rossi right at the very back, side by side with JSR South. And that shows you how well JSR have been doing in the early part of this competition. Sport division icons all tuned up here on Silverstone. And here we go, final race of the day. Race one of seven. And it's time to rock and roll and look at Rams go. 
Look at Revs go. Beautiful line through turn one. Got his braking perfect. Allowed Paps to overextend in there and did the over under on him. TPR Zermatt now up the inside in the Esprit V8. Weighs 2,800 pounds. So it's almost, almost 3,000, making it look very light indeed. And Papai falling backwards now. Well, he's allowed his teammate Paps to go into third. So it's not all lost. You can see JSR Type R as well wide back there. And we got someone spinning out to the inside. We'll have to catch up on who that was that was falling all the way back. The three JSR drivers back here, seventh through ninth, is the JSR blockade there in this race. And they're going to be able to work together now. We've seen them do team rides earlier on today. They're going to be able to do it again. JSR towards the back, but looking strong. And they are currently in the lead through the first two races. So they just they don't need anything spectacular here. They just need a, a pretty decent finish. And if they can do it all together, then that's obviously a good thing as Chemical was one of the ones that got caught up in a little bit of that chaos. So he's all the way back at the back of the pack here through our first lap on Silverstone. Race three of three today and riding along with Davy Skills. I want to hop back up to that leading pair if we can. That was Zermatt making a move, it looked like, for the lead on the way into Maggots and, and he Beckett. Got it. He yep. made it happen round the in outside on the way in. That's a skillful move. Nicely dri nice driving there from Zermatt. Especially with that Lotus, 350 horsepower, rear wheel. Able to make it happen, throw the move on the Porsche of Revs. Now Paps looking to do the same thing. Thought about looking to the inside. Now Revs has overcooked it a little bit. He's gone wide. That's going to allow the opportunity for Paps to come through. He's making me eat my words from asking where he's been all day. He's here. The time is now. Yeah, Revs will be kicking himself. A little bit of smoke up ahead there. The battle for third coming alive. That's Mr. Jack up against. I'm failing to see who's up there in third defending, but fighting his way toward that last spot on the podium. That's going to be, should be Revs. How far has Revs fallen back? Yeah, that's third. You're right. Yeah, that's he Revs. Is in Rev, Revs in third with Mr. Jack hot on his heels. You can see that look, the Porsche trying to defend the Viper. And I, and I keep saying, I know this is team racing, but I can't wait to see this on an individual level where you have so many different characteristics and vehicles. It just really adds a whole different level of excitement here. Lap two of seven. We've already had some fireworks in our final race of the day here in Europe. What's are coming to you live from the home of Fort Sub Motorsports here in Seattle, Washington, 17 days away from making the trip down to Mexico City. There's a little bump. Yeah, Davy Skills being nudged wide there by F4H Diablo, who takes the advantage. Davy. Yeah, there's a little hello right back. <laughs> yeah, he didn't like that one bit, did he? Eighth and ninth. Diablo trying to clear Ooh. and not having it. So Diablo losing it there on the exit of the corner with a little bit of a help from Davy Skills. They're getting into each other. I mean, that might have been the clear as day as what we saw. There's Paul White again, aka Revs. Rossi in fourth. That allow the Lotus to come right through of Diablo. This, this is the JSR threat here. These drivers moving forward through this pack. Rossi in the ACR Viper, looking very controlled, very conscious in the way he's moving that car around the Silverstone track surface and threatening now for that third position against Mr. Jack. Yeah, Diablo all the way in the back. That's JSR South in fifth. JSR Rossi in fourth. You have Revs behind him in that sixth position. Can't TX3 Mr. Jack hold the door? Well, that is going to be a, a tough task to have to do that for the next five laps around Silverstone. You know what, if I'm Rossi right now, he's running the same car as Mr. Jack. So he knows the speed characteristic to that Viper is going to be exactly the same. TX3's Viper against JSR's Viper. It might be tempting for Rossi to swap positions here with his teammate JSR South right behind the Lotus, who's going to have a little bit of a different speed profile and might be able to make a move on Mr. Jack and get him out of the way so Rossi can come through. You can play it that way, but you can also say that South is sort of acting as a protection Sure. Right now in that Lotus. He's got a rear gunner. <laughs> it's looked strong thus far. You can see them matching each other there in third and fourth. Plenty of laps to go. Plenty of opportunities to try a lot of different strategies. 
But that Lotus has looked awfully strong and Zermatt out in front. There you can see Paps coming around and and I think if you're right, if, if you're looking at the way they're running right now, the pace that they're having on Silverstone, if I'm Rossi, I'm letting my teammate go through. Yeah, coming around, Woodcut towards the old start, finish straight, right-hander of Cops here. Rossi still looking at the rear of that ACR Dodge it, Viper up ahead. Yeah, you got to let him through. I think at this point, you're, if, if you're Rossi, you're holding up south. I think you're right. I think you're right, uh, especially with the two Lotuses up ahead. I mean, Lotuses seem to have the pace around this track. It must be, it, 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 this is going to play out over the coming laps. It's an interesting strategic battle that we're seeing here. Lap three of seven. As they come down to Stowe, little right-hander. Zermatt out in front. Paps, Mr. Jack, that's your one, two, three right now. South Revs at four, at five and six. If you're Rossi, you gotta let them by. It knocks me out looking at the Lotus Esprit, how similar it looks to a BMW M1. The cars are almost 20 years apart, a little sure. 20 years, I think. So an incredible amount of time. It shows, it shows in some ways how there's kind of kind of no fashion in a sense in cars. There's beauty is beauty, you know, it's, it's a beautiful shape, that car. It looks very similar to the M1, is why I say that. Well, we had some chaos between Diablo and Papai earlier here on Silverstone. Going to take a look back at that. That ended up dropping Diablo well back. And you can see they just sort of, they sort of get in a cat fight right here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think I called it as, uh, as Davies Kills initially. I was absolutely wrong there. It was. Uh, He's definitely getting caught up with the TX3 driver here on the exit yeah, Paps. of... Uh, it's good to see Papai. Yeah, on the exit of Luffy. And he'd had enough. It. it got to a point where he just had enough. And sent him off into the grass and ended up catching a little bit of the wall there. And That is about as blatant as you've seen as we have a an opportunity here for a change. Mr. Jack has finally caught up with Paps and he's moved to the inside. Can he make it stick? Rossi's right behind him. Two TX3 drivers up ahead and... Mr. Jack leading the way for Rossi to come through and his teammates. So that could have been played slightly stronger, I think, by the two TX3 drivers. Could have maybe blocked out the JSR driver from getting through, but in the end, it's going to be TX3, JSR, TX3, JSR. The battle for second. Well, you need, if you're TX3, you need all the points you can get. You can't afford to have JSR even running in the top half. And for right now, your attitude about JSR is just give them the trophy. They've they have looked really job. strong over this last race and a half. I'm watching Paps, who's sunk back in pace recently. He's really uh, slipping down the order and trying to work out maybe is there a bit of damage? Has he got some transmission damage? Short shifted the engine on the way, uh, shifting down the gears. Has he hurt the, hurt the engine itself? Looks like he's lacking pace mid-corner, so it, it could be suspension damage, I guess, but maybe there's a difference in pace. Well, he's able to pick it back up. Nice recovery there through the start-finish line. Here in lap number five, we'll see the true test right here. You got Lotus on Lotus. Viper on Viper. Here in that second and third position, Rossi. And you can see South. And Paps come together there for a moment. Paps able to take back that fourth position in, in your in the distance there, but right back to Mr. Jack and Rossi. Looks like South muscled his way through, and Rossi wants to do the same for his TX3 victim up ahead. It's Mr. Jack sitting in second right now as they come into Brooklyn's and Luffield once again. That long left hander and the, the right that never ends afterwards. It's a double apex. Vipers navigating it up ahead. We're on board now with the TX3 Lotus looking forward at JSR. That's Paps, who you mentioned has just lost pace, who's running along in second for majority of the race, but has just fallen off as been lost three positions here, all the way back to fifth now. So you got Zermatt, who's well out in front, Mr. Jack and Rossi, one, two, three. And right now, Zermatch is chilling. 
It's a great drive from Zermatt. I mean, it, he deserves the lead as well. That move on the way into Maggots and Beckett's, that was that, was that one, I think, was, was so gutsy and so strong that, you know, you just got to give it to him at this point. You know, good for you, Zermatt. And hopefully he can hold on to this. Hopefully he can take this win home. TPR have been waiting for wins for a little while and, you know, cruelly denied one uh, in the final week of Series 2 with Davy Skills disconnecting from the lead of that race at Maple, ba Maple Valley. So Zermatt may be getting a little bit of a... Yeah, a bit of his just desserts uh, for TPR here. Lab five of seven, and he's been a tough out today. He's been tough, tough to overtake, and when he's had the opportunities himself to do some overtaking, he's shown a, a lot of grit, a lot of moxie out of Zermatt today. Riding along with Mr. Jack now in that battle for second. Rossi has fallen off just a little bit in the pace. See if he can make a run as we're coming through Lap six of seven. A couple more times through Silverstone. Scott Colonelli tack along with you here for race number three here at Silverstone. This is our Sport GT icons, and they've had an opportunity to grab the best tune suited for them. Yeah, and it's actually led to some some really interesting strategy and some some interesting racing and. And you, you hope in the long term of the Ford Style Racing Championship that you have the opportunity to to maybe see a little bit of customization. It's great to see. It's a skill uh, of its own. Making these cars, uh, for one, go very fast around the track, but another thing, be much more drivable. You know, give you the feedback that you want from the steering, from the acceleration, from the braking and uh, give you the rotation that you're looking for in, through, and out of the corners. Uh, on board with Chemical here, his teammate's leading the way. Zermatt's leading this race, but he's down in seventh, chasing Sterilizer for sixth position. You got Davy Skills in ninth, so that's how the TPR boys are doing it. TX3 has Mr. Jack in second. Paps in fifth. And then Papai all the way in the back as him and Diablo got into it earlier in the race. And so it's it's them in the very back. They can yeah, you, you go at it now. Well, this isn't the race that FRH needed, is it? I mean, the FRH no. fighting for second here um, up against uh, TPR. Those two separated by one point in second and third in the uh, in this in this little uh, cup that we're running now. And F4H need a strong result in this final race in order to get second place or even been with a chance of it. And maybe they need to do a little bit better than what they're doing right now. Diablo down 11th. Final lap here of our European show here on Silverstone in Zermatt. That's a good look at it right there. When you, when you go to overhead cam and there's no one around, it means you got a healthy lead going into the final lap. But really, it's just up to you to be very technical and sound through this final lap to provisionally get yourself across that finish line. The battle is going to be in that second and third position between uh, right there, Mr. Jack and JSR Rossi. But I cannot say enough about JSR and their ability to perform well in these team challenges that we passed out. We can speak to JSR and how strong they've done. At the same time, you know, we've got to have a word for Mr. Jack here as well. He's held his own in second place. I looked at him, lap two, we had two JSR drivers all over his rear, and I was thinking it's a matter of when, not if, he's going to crack. But Mr. Jack showing his metal here in second place, holding those other drivers off and even overtaking his own teammate. Well, that's the battle right there as they go across the old start finish line here at Silverstone. Final lap, Mr. Jack and JSR Rossi, two Titans battling out. They both have secured a podium position, but can you make one more step up? And right now, JSR Rossi, Al, he's thinking about total team domination. He certainly is. He's uh, not finished off the podium in any of the races uh, from today. Even if he brings home this result third, it'll be his, his worst, but still a podium result. Looking up there towards Mr. Jack, he'll wish he could have got by, uh, not least because I think he could have maybe held Mr. Jack up a little bit and helped JSR South in fourth make up a position. Well, that's the problem, you, you, you know, for the first time Rossi with the, went with the composite instead of the wood grain. 
That's yeah, right. the, the wood You're grain. Right. The wood grain. He looked tremendous. He looked. He, he was. He had a rich mahogany <laughs> flavor. <Yeah. laughs> Seather, you know, and several, you know, leather-bound books That's in right. the in the past. He's a very seen. important person. Yeah. <laughs> and Sir Matt, he'll show us. Give us a little. Give us a little some style points there at the end. As provisionally, he'll take it. Mr. Jack will hold on to second. Rossi in third. So provisionally in our final race here in our European show, that is your one, two, three alley. And I think tunes are a success. What a success. And I mean, I'm so happy for Zermatt. You know, what a great job he's done. It, TPR this year have been absolutely, you know, having a renaissance. Uh, they, these guys have come back, you know, reformed the old team, made, yeah. you know, brought the old band back together. Well, fresh win. Yeah, fresh win. They've been practicing in the garage and here they are, you know. <laughs> We got to get Davy Skills to put the uh, put the tag back on the name, though. Oh yeah, yeah, he's got to do it. He's got to buy that buy that uh, game Look, tag. Looks like a bit of a privateer at at, at the moment. <laughs> if you need ten bucks, buddy, I'm willing to PayPal you uh, <laughs> to get that. And I, I think I know a few people at Microsoft as well. Yeah, yeah, you might be able to swing that for him. You might be able to swing it for him. But uh, yeah, a great result for T for TPR there. JSR looking strong for the big W here, though. Uh, anything as we saw the provisional. Uh, and, and our eyes go across there. Is there is there anything that you saw out there on the race that would lead you to believe uh, we, we will have some adjudication? Well, that that move that we saw a couple of times Papai. between yeah, Papai and Diablo, Paps and Diablo, Papai and Diablo. I, I get confused between the two of them. I've been calling it the JSR <laughs> Paul Short. <laughs> um, yeah, so a little bit of a, a little bit of a moment there with those two drivers. Um, it looked like frustration, didn't it? it? Didn't look like it was entirely disappointing day for TX3. All in all, yeah. I mean, it's a disappointing end to a disappointing yeah. Uh, yeah, campaign. Um, at this point, uh, you're basically finding out who's going to finish second. Yeah, in a sense, right? In right. a sense. And yeah. it's one point separating TPR and, uh, and F4H. The guy's right here in the studio with us. Uh, have they, you make have they the trip enough? all the way out to <laughs> Seattle, and if you finish third, you're like, what? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess we won't take him to lunch. <laughs> no, not happening. Let's take a look at the replay here. Race number three here in our Sport GT Icon. It was good to see him tuned up, and we, we knew the Porsches were going to be tough. They started off really like a rocket, uh, but it's a little too much on Silverstone uh, for these, uh, I don't know. These these German miracles. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going it, with it. It's, yeah. it's, <laughs> this is a very tough vehicle to keep on this track with the other two vehicles out there. It's it's a hard vehicle to drive. Uh, you know, Diablo gave us some great insight there into how difficult the car is to tune. Uh, and it, you know. If you tune a car to feel great to what you, how you want to drive it, it's often not fast. You have to keep a bit of the character of the car. Ooh, that was a bit of a bit of a moment, wasn't it? Papai and uh, and and Diablo. Um, if you tune the character out of the car, it's often not fast enough. Yeah. And you're, you're <coughs> trying to keep that pace. As you're also trying to keep up with these, you know, with the Viper and the Lotus. And you sort of, you're pushing the car to its very limits. Uh, and with it, with it being a little lighter than the other two, and especially night is wide. Not, not, it doesn't have the stance of the other two vehicles. When you start to come together, uh, you're going to lose out. You're absolutely right. It's about that stance, that confidence that these cars have sitting on the track. The Porsche looks a little, it's, it's a lot older. You know, we should keep in mind, it's the oldest sure. car out there. And these cars have development, the other ones don't. Uh, and, and there you go. That's what happens when you drive a great car around this track. Zermatt takes the win with a little bit of flourish across the line. It was so good to see. Well, I tell you what, the, you know, when you, th when you think about coming into the playoffs and who's going to have a good run, I mean, yeah. some of this team... Team stuff will help, but the way you you race in those final couple of weeks of of series two has a lot to do with the way you might finish when you think about Mexico City. It does. It's and you know we talk about momentum an awful lot, don't we? But it, it is all about momentum in a lot of ways. You know, coming out of series two, the, the the winning drivers there, the drivers who win these kind of fun events that are extra to the championship. You know, what kind of momentum do they pick up going into the playoffs? There's a lot of talk about our favorite drivers uh, going into these events, and we talk about Lightning and Box. Uh, but there's also some drivers out there who'd just be great to see win, and TPR are, are one of those. Well, how about JSR today in the way they've raced, especially Rossi? Wow. Uh, yeah. What does that bode well for them down in the playoffs? JSR have been able to work together really brilliantly. This isn't the first oh. time we've seen them do a great job at a team exhibition event. Uh, how much of that carries over into their individual competition skills is a big question mark for me. I'd love to see them do well. I'd love to see them do well, but 
you know, how, uh, they need in order to do so, they need to carry this kind of performance onwards. I, don't, I haven't seen them do that in the past. Yeah, you can see below a uh, tweet coming out from their team just how proud they are of the run they that they've be. made yeah. uh, through Series 2, that they're going to be down there with Commando, Craviator, Rossi, and South, how well they are going to be represented down in Mexico City. Let's take a look at the provisional results here of race number three. Uh, and the way that shook out, Zermak was absolutely spectacular. Mr. Jack just hard-nosed, gritty racing to finish second, holding off Rossi, and then Paps uh, just falling off the pace a little bit. Was we're riding along second for the majority of the race, but for some reason, halfway through that, I, you, you question maybe was there engine damage or, or something there in the suspension that didn't allow him to continue to fight for a podium. And you can get away with a little bit of damage. You can learn to drive around it. You can try and compensate for it, uh, regardless of whether he got damage or not. And I always like to give these drivers the benefit of the doubt. I know they're all fast, but regardless if he got damage or not, he lost his rhythm mid-race there. And that's why he sunk all the way back from second. That whole pack of three went past him, and he ended up in fifth. Well, those are the provisional results. We're waiting to find out what the finals will be in our adjudication process. But let's go over to Kate. Well, Zermatt, before that race got started, he had posted in chat that he is, what was it? I'm going to go so hard in this race. And that was exactly what he did. You guys kind of laugh and chuckle. And do you agree? Obviously, he just came out ready to race. These, I mean, all of us together racing these cars, it's going to be close regardless. Yeah. And um, if you, you know, starting out in first is definitely a huge advantage because you kind of avoid the melee, the first couple of laps, you get out of lead. And it's, it's hard to be caught unless you're, you know, significantly different in pace. Looking at his lap times, I mean, he's he was right on it. So I'm not surprised. You know, Matt's a good dude. I'm glad he won. Yeah. <laughs> now, Diablo, on the other hand, you're talking about being uh, being close. Well, you were a different kind of close, and you exhaled in here. Nobody out in the on the world heard you. But we here in studio <laughs> heard you. What'd you say during that race? Uh, yeah, <laughs> he wrecked me. Yeah, I'm I'm really disappointed. I'm not mad so much. I'm just disappointed on Papil. Um, he just <laughs> turned into me. I guess he was watching cops or something because he pulled a perfect pit maneuver. <laughs> um, you know, if he's gonna race that way, it's pretty disappointing to see. Um, but I mean, I'm going to Mexico and that sort of stuff wouldn't fly there so I don't know that's it's just it's disappointing this is an exhibition you're purposely taking people out this isn't public lobbies we should all know better than that God, I'm so good I'm so glad to have your opinion all right <laughs> <laughs> something something fun that's happening here today uh, Forza Horizon 4 demo was released this morning first reactions from you three well uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm the best person to start off because uh, I'm not really a Big Horizon player, but the game looks really cool. Uh, I really enjoyed the first game. I played the I played Horizon One, and then I got into motorsport. And ever since then, I just haven't been able to go back. <laughs> All right, Revs, you're a uh, sterilizer. I'm taking that mic. I'm gonna. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I want to hear from someone who's stoked oh. about this. Revs, your response was was what? I'm excited. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Why? What's the big difference for you? Uh, the open world, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to do whatever you want. And Diablo, your thoughts too. You were you were you got a smile on your face yeah, when I mentioned that. Yeah, you know these Horizon games are really great because it is it's just something alternative to you know the track race, and a lot of times people take it as really serious. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm what to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, Horizon's a really good way to just kind of blow off some steam. You jump a trophy truck like 700 feet. You can race. Uh, they have the Mercedes Unimog truck, which is not the fastest, but it's definitely really cool to see you know blasting around and in Britain. I think it's really cool that they um, they picked Britain for the. Uh, or England, Scotland, and, and for a location this time because you get to ski, see some really cool places that I wouldn't have thought would have worked yeah. in the game, but it works. You, know, you have a place like the Scottish Highlands. You kind of have, you know, interior midlands of England. It's, it's going to be really great. Hopefully everyone uh, picks it up because it's I definitely will. The Forza Horizon 4 demo is available right now. Make sure you go to the Windows Store to download it. But before you download it, take a look at what we're going to see this year with Forza Horizon 4. Whenever you're ready. Ready? We'll get it in one take. Okay. Great Britain, land of dazzling beauty and extraordinary diversity. Season after season, changes arrive as spring rains nourish. Oh my, oh, those, those magnificent blossoms. Sir, please, uh, just stick to the script. Nature's curiosity is powerful, savage. Good heavens, what is that? It's a, it's a hovercraft. Why? I didn't make the game. She stalks her prey, and 
hunt is on, says the big cat. Must I voice all of these? Yeah. Summer at the watering hole. Even hooligans join the fray. It's, uh, it's hoonigans. Hoonigans. Hoonigan. What is this language? It's hoon, it's, it's English. Winter. Wait. Spring? The migration moves forth together. A true multiplier. Oh, no, no. Uh, it's actually multiplayer. It's, uh, it's a type of the game where you can play with multiple players. It's like a shared world. Multiplier. There you go. There you go, you got it. Every creature soars over the greatest Britain ever. Four changes everything. Okay. Get the ultimate edition and play four days early. Well, that's my jam. That's my uh, Forza Horizon <laughs> is my jam. And uh, first, of, first of all, Mechberg is in the chat. Uh, he said that Diablo went full dad mode on Popeye there. Um, <laughs> he wasn't being, angry. I'm just, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed <laughs> at, at this moment. Just disappointed. Go to your room. We'll think about it. I've Come been, back out. Race later. <laughs> I've been loving Diablo's quotes today. He's, he was like. I've been playing for like 10 years. I think I can shift the gear. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, I've had the opportunity to play Forza Horizon 4 because right. uh, I'm preparing for a battle against Ludacris, the mm. rapper, actor. He's more furious than fast at the game. <laughs> uh, but um, it's just a tremendous, especially with not only the location that it's in in Britain, but the, the change of seasons and... At some point, you gotta put the McLaren away for a moment when the when the the ice and the winter comes through. That's when you'll finally want to get in your McLaren SUV, not McLaren, your Maserati SUV. <laughs> McLaren would be very upset at me because they will never make an SUV. But <laughs> you know what I mean. That's the interesting yeah. thing about just like we have dry and sure. wet tracks. Now in Force Horizon, you're gonna have the opportunity to face all the elements in all the seasons. My mum, right, is a uh, she's a landscape historian. I'm obviously from the UK. Uh, my mum's from a landscape historian from from around there, and she's uh, very involved with uh, the. I know, I know her very well. Yeah, with preserving the heritage. You know her well. Yeah, <laughs> preserving the heritage of the UK, and so it's like dry brick walls are a big thing there. You don't want to. You have people taking bricks off them, and then they disappear. Laid by the Romans, they are. So spare her a thought while you're sliding a McLaren Senna <laughs> sideways down down our heritage, and it's <laughs> flying everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I can't wait. It's gonna be so much fun. Yeah, October second. Make sure you guys <laughs> go check it out. Of course, you can get the the ultimate edition to get it a few days early, and we'll see how good Ludacris is <laughs> when we get to that point. A little Xbox Live session. Uh, we are on the road to Mexico City. We're here having fun, obviously. Uh, today hanging out with some some great team racing, but it's all about that road down to Mexico City, and um, it's going to be interesting because you you go from the online experience to all of a sudden you can reach out and touch somebody, yep. and uh, some of these big names strike some can strike some fear. It's it's intimidating, and you know <laughs> honestly. We almost create the event to be intimidating. Yeah. It's, it's a scary thing. Come along, you know, grab a controller and start racing against the very top people in the game. You're all in a room together. Uh, it's, it's a very scary thing. This is the tournament structure we're looking at right here. Yeah, 36 drivers. You can see you split up into three groups. We showed you those earlier. Then you advance to Saturday, midday, 24. And then the top six from each of those will be on Sunday, 11 a.m., top 12 drivers from Series 2 are battling out and get those very crucial points to try to make your way into London. It's such it's it's such an amazing environment, and it's the place that all of these drivers practice for. It's what we've been doing all year, hot housing these drivers, work, you know, having them work together, work against each other, and, uh, yeah, fight for those victories. Who's going to come out on top? I mean, that's a, that's a massive question for every single driver who's entered the Forza Racing Championship 2018. So make sure you join us Friday at 9 a.m. That's when we get started. Put on your calendar Saturday at 1 p.m. and then Sunday at 11 a.m. And I believe those are all central time? 1 p.m. Correct. Central. central. They're on Saturday and then Sunday uh, 1 p.m. as well. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be awesome. I can't I can't wait. It's just a few weeks away. 
All right, once again, if you're just joining us, here are the three groups, and they're all very beastly at the top. When you think of Hard BR, who's now Zoom, Force One, who's a real up-and-comer, Roadrunner there. They're in group two. You got Lightning, Mitch, also Rossi's in there as well. You talked about that Mitch-Rossi rivalry, and then Box and Lage in a Venom sandwich there in group three. Some awesome new names as well in this uh, second round, RBM GUI 12. I'm going to work out how exactly to pronounce that. Uh, an old teammate of mine back when I was racing uh, is, is GUI 12. Uh, Wesley, someone who's qualified time and time again for these events, either wasn't old enough or couldn't get the travel sorted to come over and, and do them. Finally, we're going to see Wesley at a live event. Also, South. Somebody who missed out. How, how did Self miss out in the Series 1 finals? I don't know. He's here, though, in Series 2, and he's going to be there in Mexico. By the way, when you see us, come up and say hello. Ask us where the best tacos are, because <laughs> we'll actually be there a couple days ahead of time, uh, scouting everything out, getting our bearings, and, of course, playing for the Horizon. Specifically looking for the best places to eat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. So there's your 36 that are headed down to, to Mexico City. I can't wait. I cannot wait. It's it's going to be an absolutely huge event. Uh, yeah, so excited. All right. So that's where we are right now as far as Mexico City. Let's head back over to Kate. Uh, I'm just really excited, Scott, that it's a priority for us to find the best food spots while we're in Mexico City. Okay. So F4H right now, they're getting a chance to see the roster as well for the first time, too. I got up. My palms are already sweaty out of revs. <laughs> Diablo, what's your takeaway from this very stacked group of, of racers? I mean, this is top 36 in the world. This isn't a surprise looking at it. Um, in terms of where I potentially could place, you know, I'm just going to try my best. And that's the, the fact that I made the top 36 was my goal. Anything on top of that, this is what it is. You know, if I don't make it into the, into the semifinals on that Saturday, so what? I'm good to go to Mexico and hang out with some guys that I've seen and haven't seen before. So yeah. I, I really can't complain about any of it. You know, and Sterilizer for you, I mean, just taking it back a few weeks, you were... Called up, to, called, called up to race in week three. In week two, you missed. Mm -hmm. And you actually having the chance to run in Mexico City is pretty amazing. Yeah, um, it is amazing. But looking at my group, I'm going to need a lot of <laughs> practice. <laughs> um, starting in 12th behind all these great drivers, it's going to be tough. But, you know, I'm going to do my best. And maybe if I can let the incidents play out in front of me, make my way up the field, uh, I can make it through maybe. So we'll see. All right, Revs, my friend. This is something you're coming in strong for the team. You're 25th, but you're looking at this group here. You're, you're already seeing yeah. kind of what you're up against. Yeah. It's How do you prep and plan for something? Well, I just, as soon as this is done, I'm going to go home and practice a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because that's chemical and virus. I mean, those guys are going to be on it. So, and I have to stay above eighth. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. You know, Revs, for you, I think the conversation for this year, season has been ups and downs, and you've really, like, felt that yeah. roller coaster of emotions. You even said it's physically demanding, you know, mentally draining. Mentally, yeah, it's it's draining. It, uh, having to practice a, a number of different combos, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it takes a lot out of you, yeah. As it relates to having the team support, uh, uh, team support, you know, within this last year, you joined on board. You got a chance to get to know these guys on a deeper level. You actually told a great story with Diablo as well and how you guys kind of kicked it off. How important is having that support? I mean, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Diablo and another driver that's not here, Harmonic. Mm -hmm. uh, those two guys, we met in San Francisco doing a, a Forza event, uh, and, uh, yeah, we kicked it off. And uh, we've been friends ever since. And yeah. how, how special was it? One thing you had mentioned, you know, being a part of this whole community is the Lama trip and how journeying to there and the travel that th that's really come on board with the Forza RC. It's something that you've never, you never would have had a chance to, no. as you said. No, I never thought I would even, I would even get close to <laughs> being able to go. But yeah, the, the FRC has made a lot of dreams come true. Yeah, that's for sure. I feel like that's probably true for each and every one of you. And I think I think one thing for sure, though, is true. We want to know what happened in this last race and if there was <laughs> any any kind of shakedown. I don't know. Do you, any thoughts? Um, the last race, it was... Uh, <laughs> I didn't have quite the pace as the, the, the Lotus or the Viper. Yeah. So I just got trampled 
<laughs> right at the start. I mean, yeah. You knew the you knew the Porsche was going to be tough on that track. You had said yeah. that early on. Yeah. Gentlemen, I, was the, uh -huh. I was the best out of the Porsches, but. Hey, that yeah. see so. that's a takeaway. That's all you can ask for at this point. That's in time. all I can take from it. <laughs> guys at the in the booth, did you guys uh, feel the same way? You got to give him a pat on the back for being the top in his game well, in that car. Well, Revs hit me in the fields just. Give I know, him, I was give right him, there. Give, <laughs> giving shots out to everybody, man, know, and yeah. talking about this community, and yeah. it, it really is, man. You know, all these guys coming up together and get to getting to do what they love. Let's take a look at the final results here of that race number three. We have a one penalty to pass out, and yes, sir, you know who you are. Yeah, you know what you did as well as uh, <laughs> Diablo and Papai coming together there. So there's a few more points. And that's for the best driver in each of the cars. Yeah, that's so 22 for there. Zermatt. Right. Uh, and, he, and he got some extra for Mr. Jack, who was in the Viper. Correct. And then Rev's getting a little extra because he was in the Porsche. Okay, so that's an, that's an interesting addition to the points there that we do. Is there, there's all sorts of bonuses happening there. Uh, so, yeah, nice to see Zermatt, of course. Um, I just figure we made mistakes. We just we make mistakes <laughs> all the time. But, no, Zermatt was, was the best in his... Uh, in his, he was in the Lotus. Correct. Yeah, Lotus. he was in the Lotus. the Lotus. Yeah. Mr. Jack was in the in the Viper, and then revs down there at the bottom. So let's see where that ends up netting out these teams today. And JSR put up 90, 90, and and Rossi is over half of that, forty nine points, and it was close. Rossi was close to beating TX three. But Rossi, As a team. Rossi today had the team that he needed. And I love to see that. JSR were there to support him. South and Type R were there to support Rossi and bring home this victory. So beautifully done by all three of them. Yeah, Rossi getting the lion's share of the points, but he had the team that he needed to take home victory. TPR, they take second from F4H. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, well, you, you feel for Mr. Jack, you feel for Zermatt, uh, who, who kind of carried their teams, but a little, a little tip of the cap to, to Chemical as well, who had some nice races. Diablo out there as well. Yeah. So, um, but you got to put together uh, the full team. You do exactly, and that's what you know. That's what JSR have brought more than any other team today is that full team. You know, the, the whole thing. Three drivers who are able to work together, move through the pack. We saw that on the track. We're seeing it now on the scoreboard. What's your? I mean, they're in the studio, but F4H. I, I, I mean. I know you're so, it's okay to be critical. I'll, <laughs> I'll protect you. I'll protect you. I don't have any criticism of SCI FRH yeah. today. I think um, they got unlucky with a few of the incidents. It's about momentum a lot of the time. If you carry the momentum through the races, then you can you can do a great job uh, on the school board at the end of the day. I think, you know, watching Diablo getting caught up, watching Sterilizer suffering from that sim twitch, those were sort of the moments that were decisive for F4H. At the start, though, they won the first race. They had every chance of bringing home this event. So, yeah, momentum turned against them a little bit, but they'll they'll have another bite of the apple later on this afternoon. Yeah, a little, little uh, North American style. Do you think uh, they improve in, in our later racing? It just opens the field all over again. I want to see TPR as well in yeah. this late one. They've, they've won that last race. They've got their taste of victory. Now they're coming into the I second know, event. I know we're, uh, you think we're going to see any changes in the rosters from some people just needing to go into bed. <laughs> yeah, for and, sure. And some people sure. coming to play. And people are bringing in new drivers as well. TPR, I think we're going to see uh, Lou and Dan Tastic coming in there. I think as well we're going to see um, Caesar's Wrath from, from GTR joining the JSR yeah. roster to pad them up, which is great to see. I, I thought actually last time we were out in, in the fourth week, we're gonna, that was the last time we were going to see GTR. Very popular team. It's nice to see them back here uh, with, the G, with the JSR team. Looking forward to that here later on today. Let's go back over to Kate. All right. So you guys just, Scott and Ali, just gave your thoughts on what happened with uh, F4H today. Now it's for them to speak for themselves. Uh, as a matter of fact, sterilizer. Uh, t your takeaways. Your first race, obviously, a great race. That second race, what the heck, you know, and, and so on and so forth. How would you How would you describe today? I was I was so happy with my first race. Uh, <laughs> I was a little jittery after that. Like I actually got a win, like my first time out here. And then the second race, the sim twitch and not being able to get past uh, people in front of me. It, you know, it kind of took my momentum down a little bit. And I was confident going in the third race because I'm, I'm usually really strong in tuned cars. And um, 
the, the first few turns were okay, and then I caused my own accident, like, again, <laughs> after <laughs> after the first section. I made my way back up to sixth, so not a bad result, but uh, I was really happy with fastest lap, but, you know, that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> good with sixth place. You wanted those bonus points for yeah. that fastest lap. <laughs> Man, uh, yeah, if we got bonus points for fastest lap, that'd be really nice, but we don't. <laughs> and Diablo, on your end, you know, a little bit of a roller coaster of emotions for you. Consistent, though, overall. Yes and no. Um, the first race, I felt like I did pretty well. You know, me and South had a really strong battle. Um, it was for the, I think he got a penalty. I'm really not sure what happened with that. It um, must have been something not to do with me. Um, the second race just wasn't great. <laughs> um, it was, the brat was really hard driving. The third race, I'm, we've already talked about that. That yeah. I think I could have been up, I think, where, where Griffin was, you know, fifth or sixth. I had the pace in that car once I kind of got on my own. Um, you know, but we've uh, we'll be back uh, for the North American broadcast. Uh, you absolutely will. And uh, I sitting think right here with me on these couches. Yeah, I, I got a little chip <laughs> on my shoulder now. I'm sure you do. And Revs, for you, what did you learn today that you can take into the North America show later on? Uh, I have to practice the trophy truck for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my pace is off in the truck, uh, but the first race I felt like my pace was good. Uh, it's fine. Just have to be lucky mm -hmm. in the next race. And uh, the second race, I mean, I was completely off pace with the truck. The third race, I, I felt good. I couldn't compete with the, the Lotuses mm -hmm. or the Vipers, but I felt good about it. And those bonus points, you, you helped the team on that one with uh, having the fastest, being a top ranked with the Porsche. So congrats to you on okay. that. That's a nice. good one. Yeah. Good tip of the hat. Yeah. Uh, of course, these Feels three good. will be back with me. Scott and Allie will be here as well for the North America show coming up at 6 p.m. Pacific here. Make sure you join us at watch.forzarc.com. And, of course, this is all getting ready as we head to Mexico City in just a few short weeks. We'll be there. It'll be a lot of fun. But, of course, before that, we have a promo show coming to you live from Mexico City. Again, that'll be Allie, Scott, myself, a few other of our friends and, uh, and community. Uh, September 26th, I believe that is, on Wednesday, the weekend before. And so make sure you join us for that as well. But we look forward to having you tonight. I know these guys have had a few takeaways. We'll get some practicing in. Uh, we look forward to seeing what the teams show up with here later on. Again, that is the North America show at watch.forza.rc.com. A big thanks to the community for getting involved today for our uh, sponsors and make all of this possible, our cast of hundreds that are all behind us. We look forward to seeing you later on today.